I think that allowing for the book being, after all, a parody, something like 1984 could actually happen. This is the direction the world is going in at the present time. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-abasement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. Nina Infinity, welcome to my channel on this Wednesday night. It's breaking the narrative, and we got lots to talk about with Adam Craigler. What up? So, good to see you, Nina. Good to see you, man. What's going on? Chilling, yeah. Chilling. Yeah, you know me. Chilling. How are you? Oh, I'm so good. I installed a new uh, master closet in my house today. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah. Nice. I feel so adult having like a nice closet that has. Are you like do you just, feel like a king just like kinda, walking in there kind of yeah yeah it's it's fantastic uh, i i don't have all the uh the the cool uh things uh those are for niche got some cool stuff she's got like this pull out uh pants bar pant bars where you can like hang your pants over and then you when you slide it shut it like does the slow close so oh it my god it's it's nice. You're making nice. you're you're actually turning me on. I know that sounds really fucked <laughs> up, but like talking about adult closets, yo, and not like being in one. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, calm down. Drink some water. Um, it yeah. is it's like a nervous sip here. It's, it's weird. I I was telling her, uh, yesterday or I don't know the other day when we were, it was coming to fruition. Like we were, we decided we were gonna do it. We were trying to find out like a good good, I don't know, thing to. To, to that will work in our closet because mm -hmm. it's kind of a weird room it wasn't designed as a closet but it, it's like a tiny little office next to our bedroom that makes no sense for anything but a closet but there was nothing in it It was just an empty box we had to do something and i, I when we finally pulled the trigger and we like got the stuff and uh i was telling her yesterday i'm like man like it feels like i'm a real adult now mm -hmm. <laughs> now that I, now that i can like walk in and view all of my clothes in like a, a proper manner a yeah, proper manner that i i understand completely what you're saying when i first moved to cancun a few years ago mm -hmm. um when like we, we were in like our starter apartment you know and like all the apartments had like these tiny little closets that weren't actually closets so they're like basically like they're kind of like an ikea shelf with okay. like a bar you know so like there's no yeah. doors or anything like that it's just like a couple of shelves with like a, a couple of drawers and just like the bar to hang your clothes in and like the humidity here is intense so we would like my, my clothes were always molding and Ugh. like all the stuff it was like really bad and so when we finally like kind of like when, when we pulled the trigger and moved out of the apartment we left and we went to a house and it had like actual closets. I was like, oh my God, I miss having closets. I made it. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. And then the other day, we pulled the trigger and finally bought a bed, like a real crazy oh, that's awesome huge. mattress that's very important. And bed. I know. And I like I bought this um like amazing bamboo mattress. 
and out like bamboo sheets and like crazy bamboo sheets stuff. are my favorite. I love. I've They're been raving so about good. bamboo for so long. I don't understand why we don't make everything out of bamboo. I know. Like I'm the wall. same way. It's Definitely. so soft. It's, it's so amazing. soft and breathable, and like yeah. it's it's the best, especially for this climate. It's the best. So because now I feel make, you can't make money on it. That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I'm with you on the adulting thing. I completely, I, I, I feel you. I feel you. Yep. Uh, we got so many people in the chat, you guys. What's what going up, everybody? on, everybody? How are you all doing? Uh, thank you for be here, being here. Please smash the like and share the stream. I'm pretty sure that my channel is shadow banned, especially because I talked about Ezra Miller and like grooming and that uh, Ezra Miller is the <laughs> the straw. I think so. I really do. <laughs> wow. They were like, wait, you're talking about grooming in Hollywood and pedo stuff? No. It's like that's no. I mean, it's actually cut happening. it out. <laughs> I mean, it's it's reality though. <laughs> I know it's reality. Uh DL, deranged lunatic. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I don't know what it is. It's a rose. Thank you. Thank you Need so a, much for the My rose. mom is in chat, by the way. I'm just just I see I see my mom in chat. No, are you serious? Yeah. Who's your yeah, mom? It's Robin you Robin Robin Scogie Savvy. I mean, she just said, Hey Adam. Hey, uh, hey Nina, hey Adam, love you. Um, oh my god. I mean wait. it's my mom, so it's not weird. <gasps> Hi. Hi, Adam's mom. Yeah, my mom's right. watching too, but she probably won't I comment. Because okay. um because I've been like, right? don't comment. Yeah, you can say hi to her all you want. Don't comment. I can't stop my mom. On my stuff. Oh. Well, why? Hi. Hi, Adam's hey, mom. Hey, Nina's mom. Excuse me. Can, mm -hmm. Give me a second. Hey, mm -hmm. Nina's mom, please comment and say hi. <laughs> just just say hi. Mom, you if you're even, watching, you can say hi. <laughs> look, don't even, you don't have to like admit that uh, you're her mom. Just kind of say hi and then she'll know. Or wait, there we go. She'll know and that, that'll that be enough. Oh for my me. God. She's probably not watching. I don't know. She's she's not saying anything. She's probably laughing her ass off. Um, she, <laughs> well, hello, she wa she's mom. watching so that she can make sure I'm not swearing so she can make, like, give me a hard time after, after every show. She'll well, give me that mom lecture. I do have something to say to her. If okay. you are watching, thank you for raising her. I'm sorry. I, you're, I'm, I'm looking at you over here. So I'm like, mm -hmm. thank you for raising her and doing what you did for her when, when she was young. Uh, I, I know the story because I had Nina on the show or on my show and I interviewed her. So I, I know uh, the history that she's went through. So I appreciate uh, the decisions oh. that you made in your life uh, yeah. that led her here. And uh, vice versa, thank you, Robin, for having such an awesome son and oh. making him a thinker and a real You're only man. saying that now because I, I just did that. I know. It's, it's true. too late. It's you can't do late. that now. It's too late. It's too late. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It, it just sounds like a cop out move for me. Like, I'm, oh, I'm not I about better, that. I better say something nice. I, too. I, I, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you call me out. It's fine. Uh, Valkyria Winter, thank you so much for becoming a member. Do that thing you do, Adam. Do that thing. I just did. I just did it. I did it. I did, it. I did the thing. Thank you. Um, and then, wait, I just saw something else. And you sent the super sticker, too. Thank you for the super sticker of this pair going fist bump. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have so much to talk about tonight. Oh, my gosh. Oh, your mom's so cute. You're also very beautiful, Robin. Just saying. Yeah, she is. Um, so we have lots to talk about. Oh my goodness. Adam, are you watching any Disney Star Wars at all? Like, what was okay? Let me ask this: What was the last Disney Star Wars show that you watched, or Star Wars? Anything Star? Wars? I unfortunately watched Book of Boba Fett. Now I didn't pay for it. I had a buddy who I watched. I, I watched it with. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a few of us: me, Darth Call. Uh, and, a, and a mutual friend of ours, we we watched it together and cringed together and basically laughed. We we didn't comment, but we had like our an hour long session after each episode, just ripping it apart. Just like, mm -hmm. what the hell? What the hell was this shit? Uh, and it's bad. Hey, Ashton, I see you in chat. What up? What up, Ashton? Yeah, Ashton it was in the house. terrible. I mean, pretty much. I, I, it's funny enough, I was talking about this with Comics Division earlier on my show about how as soon as Disney bought Star Wars, Star Wars died. Star Wars yep. was over. It was it was done. There was no more Star Wars because that was the true Star Wars up until that moment. It, okay, 
Rogue One. I I didn't. I liked Rogue One. You did? Not, yeah, I liked. I liked it. I There's thought nothing it was, wrong I, with that. I thought it was a good movie. I didn't. Not once through that movie did I get taken out of the movie to think about like, damn it, they injected some shit into this movie, which is like mm. every other movie or every other show. It's like, mm -hmm. what the hell is this? Like, what? No, that honestly, that movie I I uh, I liked. I I had no issues with it. I um, didn't like it. You didn't like but it. But no, I didn't like it, but only because first I had a lot of expectations going into it at the time. Don't have because expectations. I know. I know. I've I know been black pilled that. since then. Yeah. But I went into it because I was a huge Disney fan like at the time. Oh. And, like okay. massive Disney girl. Like the the I kind see. of Disney girl that I was telling my husband like at the time or like Your husband before at the time? that actually at, like or at the time no 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 at the time before that now, I told him when we get married <laughs> I want to get ready it married in Disneyland like cuz we oh were still God. married at the time when that that came out that like that's what I meant it's like we Yikes. were married so we wouldn't have another wedding but th I, that's I how see. crazy of the Disney fan I was is I wanted to have like a Disney wedding like I was I was that Disney girl like everything princess you could possibly imagine I would get yikes I was that crazy Disney girl. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now I've completely <laughs> been you Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Thank like, you. Thank goodness. Jeez. Like, uh, you know, well, I don't have you not heard my story, Adam, of, about Disney and how like I risked my life to watch Disney in Iran. Like when I, I do was, know like, that part. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So, so it was a, it was a part. I, I, I totally get it. Actually, you don't even have to explain it to me. I, I understand it. It was. It was your view into freedom, almost yeah. like your, your, yeah. you know, Disney was your, um, your badge of honor. Like I'm, I'm not doing, like this, bullshit. I, I'm doing something different, and that was Disney. Yeah. So I get it. It was that window, you know, yeah. out into another it world. It was my window of freedom. Like I was literally like the Little Mermaid, you know. Like I was like, I want to be part of that world, and I want that right. world was the West, and you know, America, and like you know, for me, it was something totally different, and that association of that struggle. And I, you know, I put all of that onto Disney and I love Disney for that because it like, you know, brought me out of my shell. Right. Um, and then they betrayed me. They completely pulled a Palpatine on my ass. <laughs> it was like, you know, like they just went into the dark side. And so when I went to watch Rogue One, the very first moment that I sat in the theater and I didn't hear the Star Wars theme, it was jarring for me. So like, I, I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, I was like, this is a bad is. sign. Yeah. Every single movie. Every single movie starts like that. And then they and then later, like after awards, because at, at the time I wasn't like that big of a nerd. So I wasn't like, you know, what's good rope one gonna be about before I watch it? Like, let me research all this, right? Yeah. Uh like I didn't know that they were saying like it's gonna be different. And I didn't know that it, they were saying like we're not even gonna, you know, start it with the Star Wars music because it's not the episodes, this is a totally different thing, blah blah blah. I learned all that later okay. on, but at the time I was thinking. This is different. Like this is different than the other Star Wars that we've been watching and that I fell in love with and I love and you know is, is, is part of my very part of my life and it feels really different. The only thing that wasn't different was like basically like the last 10 minutes when Darth Vader showed up and I was like finally right. something good like you know like and <laughs> I was all about that Darth Vader scene but then afterwards I, it is amazing that scene. That was sure. a great scene. But then afterwards I was like that was kind of disappointing pointing a little bit and then rise of skywalker came out and i was still kind of like it, it's still good it, it still has potential you know like i was kind of like hanging on like it kind of sucked but you hung on all the way to rise of skywalker I, uh, no i hung out till the last jedi and then the last jedi completely destroyed me like the because yeah. i watched the first one and then i watched well, what was the first one called? Not Rise of Skywalker, the other one. Oh, okay. Oh, all right, all right. I and was gonna because Rise of Skywalker is the last one. That yeah, yeah, made. yeah. I, I forgot. That one was like first. I always forget wow. the name of it. The first um, one was. I, honestly, I can't think of it either. Holy shit! I can't what even remember it? the name. I want to. I you know what I want to keep saying a new a new new hope. I know that's what I like. <laughs> I'm like I know it's the new hope. It's not it's the new the, hope. It's the new hope, but the new new hope. Um, oh my god. Chat, what is it? What's the, the what, fucking what is it? JJ one? The new one. Uh, the 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 seventh. Is it? The, it's the seventh. 
It's seven. The seventh episode. I'm going to... Oh, yes. Force Awakens. Thank you. Force Awakens. Thank you, whoever it was that Force fucking said that. Bradley, thank you. Um, everybody's going to take away my think. nerd card now. Uh, no, yeah, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> I got to stop you right there. Whoa, wait a minute. I told you Star Wars died when Disney it bought it. it did. So you not knowing the Star Wars lore from Disney, mm -mm. you don't lose doesn't any count. points. In fact, okay. in count. fact, you gain some points. Respect. <laughs> you just gain some respect. Yeah. In my book. In my book. Well, thank God. Saying. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> Because I, I, embarrassed, I embarrassed myself last week too with Clifton Duncan because he was talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Turtles and I was like, yeah, I like that one. And it would turn out to be the completely like, because I don't know the colors. Like I so, I don't know the colors and the names. So I was okay. like, I like Michelangelo. That's the blue one, right? And he was like, dude, like, no, no stop that's it. That's Leonardo. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. That okay. was like a bad. You know those points card. I just told you? Yeah. That, that was, you lost I them. I shouldn't have told you. I shouldn't you have just, told you. You just lost them. <laughs> Clifton's awesome, yo. I gotta get he him back laughing. on my show. He that dude great. is fantastic. He was great. Um, yeah, what a cool dude. But yeah, so th then I watched The Last Jedi and it destroyed me completely. Yeah. And I cried. You <laughs> cried. I like, yeah, I cried afterwards. I was like, I like I was in well, shock. When... I was like in shell shock. I was See, like, See, that's what? when you realize that Disney was uh, actually killed Star Wars. Like yeah. Star Wars was truly dead. Like, oh yeah. wow. It is over. All the Star Wars that are good are are done. That's it. Yeah, it's that was it's it. done. Because it and is then, new. I didn't watch any after that. That good was it. You. Nothing Don't. else. I uh, I, I did not want to watch Kenobi. Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, I, I did watch it. Um, and now when they fired Gina Carano, I was like, Matt, fuck that, because you know, yeah, she's a lot of people skipped. conservative, yeah. and she was like outspoken and like mm -hmm. she's a freaking badass she's great she was an american gladiator i fucking love that show by the way i, I used to watch it when i was a kid um, that was that was a fun show and uh you know when they fired her i was like wow okay well fuck disney and i only i only watched book of boba um because i actually really liked bounty hunters there was a game that i played when i was younger that was mm -hmm. star wars bounty hunter or something like that and you you got to be a bounty hunter. You would go and like do what you wanted to see in Book of Boba. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this, I, I I'm sure you heard about it at least. Oh yes, um, I know all about everything. I just never watched it. I mean, good. Yeah, you're not you're not missing anything. I'm just but. like I can't I can't do this to myself. There's there's several franchises that have basically lost me as a customer. What's uh, the rest? Star Wars, yeah. Star Trek, uh, and Star Trek, Doctor huh? Who. Uh, I will not watch. I, and never I haven't it. watched any of these fucking franchises because they failed us uh as yeah. what well, they failed me i don't fucking care about it. <laughs> well i i actually like i don't care i like the very first me. season of the newest like cuz doctor who was from like back in the day right like the 70s yeah. or something mm -hmm. the 80 mm -hmm. i don't i don't know the original doctor who and then they started a new season uh, with an, the doctor from season one of the new revamp, whatever mm -hmm. was, that was I like loved the it. The 10th doctor. That was great. I yeah. loved season one of the newest doctor. I did who. too. I and did then too. episode two, episode one of season two, it was a different doctor. And mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And then and I he's, a, he's the best one. The, he's the, the second season? Best one. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't watch David it. Tennant. I, David Tennant. David Tennant is the I best loved, one. Damn, I love the see that's this is the same thing that happened with um you gotta Alter, watch it. Alter Adam, you gotta you definitely gotta watch the tenth doctor like the uh, you gotta watch um uh that guy. Uh I I just said his name and then I forgot it. And then you gotta watch oh, Matt nice. Smith. Matt Smith is nerd the one after are, your know, your nerd points are like know, all over the place. It's fluctuating. I'm they're just up, they're down. <laughs> <laughs> man it's like the poll now, numbers and all no it. all i when i hear doctor who and i hear nerdrotic re reference it when i hear you reference it i hear all these people referencing online it's shit now well that's because it's shit now but it was i know but like i i hear it's shit like why would i want to get invested in something if it's going to go to shit like because, uh, because you can I'm stop good. it's one of those things you can stop without like mm. Man. You, without missing much i don't know if you know what i'm saying like i saw like, one ep i saw one season and i think that that was that, that was, was it good. that's enough well <laughs> i'm just saying that the next two doctors after that are the best and that's some of the best tv you'll ever watch it's like it's so okay. amazing 
It's so good. I highly That's why you're so bummed itself. about the newer I, shit. Exactly. Really loved it. I'm right. bummed. Okay. Uh, but otherwise, uh, yeah. Star Wars, though, keep hearing all these people talk about with every new show that comes out, like before for this this new one that's going to come out. It's called Andor. Uh, it's about the people, who, uh, the, the Wait, guy, Cassian which, Andor. Which Rogue character one. are they going to bring back and uh, kill? Or, it's or Cassian Butcher. Andor from Ro Rogue One because you said oh, you like Rogue One. It's a Disney character. It is a Disney character. Oh, so they're gonna make him seem like a fucking badass then? Uh, maybe, maybe not. They because he he's a man, and he's he's straight. So I'm so not. So was really Mandalorian? Sure. They might cuck him a little bit. No, I feel like. so was Mandalorian, and they made Mando the freaking badass. They, they did. They yeah. I thought oh, they made the woman okay. the badass. Both both Mandalor Mando and uh Gina are. Cara Dune, which is her character's name, mm -hmm. are badass in it. Like Book of Boba featured two full episodes of just Mandalorian, and they um. and the entire time he kicked more ass than all of the entire season of Book of Boba. Like Book Boba Fett didn't do shit. He had a, <laughs> a girl telling him what to do, right, and kicking everyone's ass. And then that's what I know. heard about but, that. See, this is the thing: Mandalorian is a Disney-owned character. Mm -hmm. uh, Boba Fett is, is not. not they have yeah. to pay royalties so if they get everyone to be like who the fuck is this Boba who gives a shit about this Boba Fett guy Mandalorian's badass you know I'm a, sure. I like Mandalorian and then people are like associating these new Disney characters with Star Wars therefore when people start talking about Star Wars they're not talking about George Lucas's Star mm -hmm. Wars anymore they're talking about the the death the dead Star Wars right uh, Disney that's what they want they want yep. it I mean and that's I mean that's every every culture every everything is the same thing of trying to get rid of the old heroes re envision either re-envision them to their own ideology or create something new that's mm -hmm. that is actually badass that makes you forget about the original yeah and it's Go all about them. the message now um yep. and, and and it's weird because this specific show andor is going to be about cassie and andor who we know what happens Isn't he dead? To Yes. He's dead, isn't he? In World One, he dies. <laughs> yeah, he dies. <laughs> cool. It's about him and how he joined the rebellion and blah blah blah. Like that's basically what the show is about. But today, uh... this news drop, and apparently, like I don't know if you saw the trailer or not, Adam. But a lot mm -hmm. of people have said that the trailer looked way better than Kenobi or any of these other shows that they've made. Fuck um, that. <laughs> well, apparently, the show's been done for like two years. Uh, it just it's been sitting on the shelf. They're They've been waiting for it to release for some reason. Why? How come? Mm -hmm. God knows. God knows. Um, but they're releasing it now. But this is dropped today. I just. <laughs> Star Wars is safe, okay. y'all. There's a lot going on here. There's so um, much going on. We'll criticize Donald Trump politics. This oh, my is... God. This is going to be amazing, you guys. Okay, let me read this because. Hold on. I, I, I need a. A pain pill. I just got it into the <laughs> migraine. Um, there's nothing here. Uh, it's all right. Go ahead. Okay. While, while you look for a migraine pill, really quickly, Bradley Burnett, thank you for becoming a member. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, thanks for that. And do it again. Do it again for Brick Hardcastle. Thank hey. you so much for being a member as well. And Ashton sent a dollar ninety nine to say Adam is a homie. Love you both. Love you too, Ashton. Thanks for being Thank here you. today. Good and day. Bird Up for two says I too have been trying to forget Force Awakens. Um, I know I need. I feel like I need a forget me not, aka Ruby Bills. Never mind. Um, okay, uh, let me see. Hold on. Oops. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. This article uh, Star Wars' next show will criticize Donald Trump politics, reveals actor. Oh my God. As if no other thing has ever criticized. <laughs> right. Oh, it's never been done before. Wow. No. Shocker. Shocker, you guys. You're so innovative. While Star Wars is a sci fi fantasy franchise packed with action and humor. Those are only the trimmings. At its core, Star Wars is a narrative based on family, 
politics and religion. And despite the complexity of the topics, it's one of the many reasons why the franchise has uh, re resonated with audiences for generations that tradition, uh, tradition looks to continue with Disney Plus's new Star Wars show, Andor. Set to debut on September 21st, Andor's a, a Rogue One spinoff prequel starring Diego Luna, who's re reprising his role, <laughs> role as a rebellion operative Cassian Andor. But while the 2016 Star Wars film was a sacrificial war, uh, war tale, the 12 episode season of Andor has been described as both a spy thriller and a refugee story and one that will take on real world politics. Oh my I wonder God. if they're going to talk about the wall because it, oh. it's got like a ref refugee story. No, dude, I, I, they are trying so hard to make the Republicans, the Trumpians, the mm -hmm. MAGA people, to make them like the evil people in Star Wars when yeah. they don't understand that they're the ones who are trying to censor people. They're the fascist, is fascistic people that are trying to control everyone's thoughts, yeah. trying to control the children. It's like, that's what the Empire would do. They are trying so hard to project I mean, that, that, I, I don't even need to see the rest of the article. I, that's exactly what this is. Oh, my God. Yes, you do, because this, is, this gets really funny. Oh um, so then the funny. <laughs> I know, this is so crazy. Please, because that's what means. people want from Star Wars, Adam. Right. People Political talk. Star Wars. Right. Um, and, Real and, world politics. Yeah, yeah I love they, they that in Star Wars. They want to think about Trump when they watch <laughs> Star Wars. I I voted for Trump. I don't want to think about Trump when I'm watching Star Wars. What the fuck? <laughs> don't you, though? Yeah, it's so funny because of what you were just saying about Disney. It always reminds me of that clip where that fascist guy, I forget what that comedy show is from, but he's like the SS guy and he's like, Are we the baddies? Are we the baddies? <laughs> like that one. I don't know what it's that's like, from that's, either. That's Disney. Um, yep. but okay, so this goes into what the actress says. So, not only is Andor, uh, Andor Diego Luna's return to the galaxy far, far away, but it's also a homecoming for Rogue One writer Tony Gilroy, who served as Disney Plus's uh, show creator and executive producer and was rep uh, reportedly instrumental in its commentary on politics. Oh, wow, cool. Yay. Um, in talking with Empire and or actress Fiona Shaw re revealed that Gilroy has written a great and scurrilous uh, take on the Trumpian world and that events in the series reflect what's happening in the world today. Uh, so she apparently said, Tony has written a great scurrilous take on the Trumpian world. Our world is exploding in different places right now. People's rights are disappearing. That's coming from the left. What? Uh, that, whose rights are disappearing? Her right to abort her child, probably. Um, which, which, God, they, they fucking just voted in Kansas to keep abortion. It's like, vote for what you want. They didn't make it illegal. These people are fucking idiots. God, I'm sorry. I'm, I've lost my patience recently. And about like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I suddenly decided I have no more patience for people who are stupid in this world. That's and, totally um, fine. So sorry if I no out, please I like it like when that. you I, I like it when people go on rants it's it's <sighs> great <laughs> I know it's like dude so I bought this today stupid I bought this today for this very reason because it's one okay. of those like squishy toys <laughs> okay Usa. so whenever Usa. I get mad I'm like ah I actually I have one of those hold on let me let me show you mine <laughs> like Trump in Star Wars ah. <laughs> I feel like I don't want to break a monitor. Oh, yet. I found it. Okay. I want to, I want to, <laughs> wait, take this away for a second. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I want to let everyone know. I did not get this for myself. Someone gave it to me. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I got to blow you up for this. Okay. I, I actually, I don't, it's nudity allowed. It's a boob. Oh my God. No, dude. Nudity is it's not a, allowed. It's literally, it's literally a boob. Someone gave is me one of, a is little boob. Is it a cup or is it one of those squishy ones that you can yeah, squish? Yeah, it's, it's literally one of those. It's it's like, you know, it's like this big, but it's a little boob. Okay, why don't you turn it around so the nip is not showing? Should I cover the nip? Yes. No, no nip? Wait, hold on. No nip. I, I know how to expose this. Here we go. No nip. Oh, my 
God. That's there hilarious. There it is. There's no nip. There's no nip. That's hilarious. <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> it's great. I mean, it. you know, it's one of those squishy, like, stress. I know. You know what? Can you boobs. do it? Do it right now. Squish it, but squish it so that the nip is in your hand. And then uh, like facing the palm. Yeah. Like, like facing the, fig- the palm. Fingers? Okay. Like facing the palm. And then, and then people won't. That's then good. it won't. <laughs> oh, you, you want me to see it? You want to see yeah, it? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. See? yeah there you yeah, see. Little, Adam little, is squeezing it's just a circle. <laughs> it's just a circle. It doesn't, it's nothing. <laughs> Someone said I'm You're transitioning. You're going to live longer. <laughs> You know, when you smile every day and laugh about life, you do live longer. I believe that. I believe that too. I, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends that sadly like look much older than I am and we are the same exact age, you know, like we went to school together and I I was like talking to some of them like a, 2 years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Like, damn dude, like you look young still. Like what the hell? And well, like, I was actually talking about like boobs. It's it's a scientific fact. I know. I uh, I did it. I I saw that you posted that <laughs> that article. I did a segment on of that on my show about uh, I don't know five months ago or something. It was uh, so you're great. you're kind of behind. You're behind here. I'm not behind. Uh, I knew this. That's why I posted about it because it was <laughs> National Boob Day. You're so like I, I just, just want to remind everyone. Everybody, boobs are amazing good for your health to squeeze a boob once in a while. Um, but but I think the it. trick the trick is living a life that makes you happy. Yes. And boobs definitely. are definitely a part of that. So I mean it's you know same hey, same line of, of boobs thinking. make me happy for yeah, sure. Good. They should. Um, boobs are amazing. <laughs> uh but yeah, so back to Donald Trump and uh, oh, oh yeah. From boobs to Donald Trump and Star yeah. Wars. I mean, are, he loves boobs. We know that. Just like her nerd levels, this episode is just fluctuating all uh, over just, the place. It's all, the, the, welcome to the Nina Infinity channel where we're <laughs> infinitely fucking chaotic. Um, I love okay. It. Uh, so then this person, by the way, this is her. I don't know if you guys, like, I don't know if you know who she is. I, have, um, I don't know. But this Are you is talking this, about the actress? Is yeah, the actress about? that's going to okay. be in it that's talking. It's this uh-huh. lady here. Uh, oh, that girl. Yeah, she's the I, one that's talking about how. Who is she oh my in? god, what is our she rights. In? What's what she is in? she in? Yeah, Let's she see. looks familiar. She she's in the uh, Killing Eve. She's in I, the Holmes. Harry Potter. She was in Harry Potter. Never seen it. What? Who are yeah. you? I'm an adult. So am <laughs> I. Uh, uh-huh. And I've seen Harry Potter like. A thousand. How is Ashton your friend? If you've what? never seen what? fucking Harry, don't Potter. tell Ashton I haven't seen Harry Potter. I hope Ashton's in, still in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, isn't her name like the Slytherin or something? Yes, <laughs> yes. That's why I'm like I'm very surprised that she's friends yeah. with you. No, don't don't tell her that I don't I haven't seen it. Yeah, don't like this not... woman is not getting an abortion anytime soon. What the hell does she care? I think she's like long past that, but. What, it, when's her birthday? This is her. This is her movies. Fifty. She's sixty four. She's sixty four years old. Well, she was girl, you're not having another kid, let um, alone aborting one. My goodness. Maybe she wants like her grandkids aborted or something. Yeah, um, like what? I I don't understand. And then you know the, these videos of women that are like, I wish I was aborted. And it's like, <laughs> do you understand what that means? Like, you'd be dead. Yeah, you wouldn't be here to say that. Wow. Fuck. Yes. Um she wants she had a mental abortion. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Oh, was that a super chat? No. Just, just I just saw that Jeff, in the uh... chat and I thought it was funny. Uh Bird Up for Two says, get ready for January 6th references and andor. You know, oh, yeah. you know what's happening. Definitely. Um oh, yeah. Bradley Burnett for five says, A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was an orange man bad. I know. Dude, actually, <laughs> speaking of that. Freaking shout out to St- Fat Steven Seagal for this meme right here. Because uh, this meme, I was dying. Uh, here it is. Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is good. That is That's good. So Justice good. Fat Seagal, dude. That guy. He's great. He's great. Fantastic, yeah. dude. And Damn, this that meme is, is everything. That is so good. It's another f- leak <laughs> <laughs> uh, i like how they sell bad. they say that like a selling point it's like 
do you understand that Star Wars fans, it has nothing to do with politics? Like, literally anyone could watch the first six Star Wars movies, and it's not, there's no, like, Democrat versus Republican anything. And, and you know, you can lose yourself in the story. Now you know, they're, like, pushing it. But you know what's crazy is that, like, George Lucas did put his real-life experiences in the original Star Wars, like, because he was... Well, sure. You know, he went to war and everything. But yeah. that's why he made sure to put the words long time ago in a galaxy far, far away at the beginning of every yeah. movie. Because it's not was, this universe. Yes, it's not here. It's exactly. there. Way, way, different world. Because he wanted to tell people that even if you see something in the story that reminds you of our world, remind yourself that it is not our world and then it's a galaxy far, far away. So whatever you choose to see within it, whatever you choose to project onto the story it's what you see it's not what i'm telling you to see you know that and, was and again, that was his message you prove disney is shit taking a huge wet loose amber turd style shit all I was over gonna say star amber wars turd style I, shit I, I, and felt you it. Said it. I felt the vibe i was like i got you i got you amber we're turd connected style. oh yeah connected this is why you have to come back on a, gr a grumpy a grumpy according to johnny depp <laughs> Yes, I, I, I never Fecal heard matter. that term before. A grumpy, yeah, yeah, but he called it a grumpy, and I, I that's so good. I like the fecal matter too. That was great. Yeah. Um, thank you, Bradley, for that super chat. God, every like it, this, this is hilarious, though. Man, it, it is. Gotta laugh at these things because if we don't laugh, we're gonna cry. I love memes. Yeah, um, memes, are, memes are the future. Let's see what what else this lady had to say because. Yo, great. Cool. Level. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Tony has written a great... Oh, wait. We read that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Tony has written a great scurliest take on the Trumpian world. Oh, wait. Pause exploding. it real quick. Them saying the same thing means mm -hmm. they were fucking paid to say that shit. That, 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 that is that, true. They had to say that. If they're saying... There's two different people saying that same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, bro. Come on. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. No, like, no, that's fine. There. That's but fine. It's the same sentence. It's the same sentence. Uh, Tony has written a great scrolliest tale on Trumpian world. Our world is exploding in different places right now. People's rights are disappearing. And oh, Andrew no, this reflects is the same. that. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay. In the show, the empire is taking over. So it's really, so they're like comparing like the empire to Donald Trump and uh, basically I knew the it. MAGA people. Uh, it's course. taking over. And it feels like the same thing is happening in reality, too. It isn't, lady. It isn't. <laughs> how? Explain it. How? See, this is this is such bullshit. They write oh. these vague, fucking bullshit. Like this shit is half the Republicans are stealing your rights, and then don't explain it at all. No. They don't. People just latch onto that. Now they play this game of telephone, where everyone's like reiterating the same. I'm actually regurgitating mm -hmm. the same bullshit over and over, just like shitting into each other's mouths all the <laughs> way down the line. And then they start getting mad at the people who are like saying, wow, this is crap. And they're like, it's like literally yeah. the human centipede of like, it, it is. Media. Yo, just it's human centipede meets the game of telephone. And that is basically the left SJW. Right army. on, right on. It, okay, it literally is that. Uh, while Lucas, uh, while Lucasfilm's latest Disney Plus series Obi Wan was set ten years after the events of blah blah blah, who cares about any of this? Because we know this. Yeah. Uh, under such uh, circumstances, the lines between right and wrong are often blurred, and there's something Shaw, uh, Shaw claimed Gilroy explores in the series. Um, I was impressed by Tony's social realist intentions. He's created a whole new mor uh, morality. How do you create a whole new morality? That's weird. It's I'll very tell you, deep no, in I can name. answer that. I can okay. answer that. Let's let's explore that line because that's actually pretty important. Mm -hmm. I that I created a whole new morality. Look at what's going on right now. Drag queen story hour. Mm. Cut cut your dick off if you're depressed and you will be a woman and you'll be happy. Or cut your tits off. You'll never be able to breastfeed your child when you grow over. Or hey, rip your uterus out and get cut half of your thigh and make a, a dick sleeve 
uh, mm-hmm. for you to feel more like you or let's pump you full of drugs and and make you, uh, you know, fix your your levels because they're off, even though they just proved that that has nothing to do with depression in the slightest. Mm-hmm. Like, what is a new morality? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to change it. They're trying to make it seem that because <laughs> I got to go back now. They said, look, look, with the empire in full force, as Shaw noticed, people will be struggling and those in authority and the government itself are the main threat. When I think about the government being the main threat, that makes me think of reality. OK, mm-hmm. I think about the Democrats and what they're trying to do uh, and the Republicans, literally the whole all of government, like yeah. everyone. They want to take our rights away. They want to buy the land. I mean, Klaus Schwab and and that whole unit over there in Davos is trying to ruin food everywhere for everyone and yep. control the planet and it's like the empire is here they are taking over and here's their minions trying to convince you that the people standing against them is the is the empire yep. when in reality they're the rebels they're the ones trying to maintain freedom on this planet mm-hmm. and it's like they're twisting this to a new morality to try to convince them that it's the other way around no 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 the government is here to help Right. Isn't that if that's like one of the scariest things to hear. Right. R- Ronald Reagan, like the mm. w- scariest thing to hear is I'm from the government. I'm here to help. It's I'm like, here yeah, to help you. Yeah. Right. You want yeah. my tax dollars. You want no. You want to know what kind of guns I have. You want to you want to take the uh, stop me from saying shit about you. Did you see that that's what's going on in the UK? They're trying to talking shit about the government in the UK is soon to be an offense. You yeah. can't even. Make I mean, it's upset. like that now in Canada. You cannot. Exactly. You cannot. You cannot say fuck Trudeau or anything like that. Like you because you know how like in the convoys they had those flags that said fuck Trudeau all over right. it. Yeah. You can't have that anymore. That's against Why? the law. That's Why? against the law. It's fuck hate that. Speech. Fuck Trudeau. Fuck yeah, fascism. Fuck Trudeau hard. That's fascist. When you yes. start censoring people, you're a fucking fascist. Period. Yes, you are. Yep. Yep. You are the baddies, motherfuckers. Creating a whole new morality. That line pisses me off. That 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 line pisses me off, too, on another level, Adam, because um, like like even though I don't watch Disney Star Wars, I still pay attention to it because it's a big part of culture. And I want to know what they're doing to it and how they're bastardizing it, because that's the new generation. That's the information the new generation is receiving. So like on this other hand, they have this book coming out called The High Republic. And in one of the, not coming out, it's actually out already. And it's for like young adults. And in it, they're also talking about having orgies and you know like having orgies um new morality uh, yeah new morality exactly they're creating this new morality for kids like oh it's fine that lando wants to go and bang robots and have orgies with people like that's fine and this is supposed to be marketed towards kids because i mean that's the first thing you read in this very article star wars is about orgies orgies is not okay based on what this is the first freaking thing they talk about based on family. Based on family. That's the very first thing. every time you hear about Star Wars, it's a family show. It's about kids. It's for kids. That's always been the way it's been marketed. And now fast forward to 2022 and what they're talking about in Star Wars is Trumpian world. What kid knows what the fuck Trumpian world means? And also, again, like I said, they're talking about orgies, uh, whether or not Obi Wan is by, you know fucking things robots. like this. It's it's fucking banging robots. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. Um, okay, hold on. Let's go back to that. Yeah, the um, so what was ridiculous. it? Yeah, new morality. It's very deep and humane. There's grief, mourning, hope, fear. It's not just primary colors here. Uh, even though Andor is Tony Gilroy's second Star Wars project, politically political themes are nothing new for the writer, director, and producer, whose uh, resume uh, includes House of Cards. Oh, he worked with Kevin Spacey, that fucking huh. weirdo. Surprised? Uh, that's a shocker. <laughs> uh, and the Bourne films. I did like the Bourne films a little bit. Well, at least the first one. I didn't really give a shit about the other ones. I like um, the first, the first couple. Yeah. Yeah, me too. With Matt Damon. Uh, yeah, Matt Damon was good in that. And, and even though Star Wars is no stranger to politics, neither is Gilroy, who, no, uh, who noted that Andor comes from the same place as his mother's 
or and it, as his mother's project, his other project. Uh, and or comes from the same place as everything else that's come out of this office, Clayton the Bourne's devil's advocate. And now uh, this, it's a full on drama. That sounds like really family friendly, you guys. <laughs> sounds great. Uh, as to what the finished project will look like, particularly given Andor's echoes of this Trumpian world, Katya and Andor's own Diego Luna promises that it will be in, uh, insanely ambitious, dark, and real, and describes uh, Gilroy's pitch as sick. It's sick, bro! Um, even, even as Tony was pitching me, I was like, this is amazing. You are sick. Maybe he meant it literally. Yeah, maybe like he meant like you're a sick One son of a hope. bitch. <laughs> it, it, uh, all, it all depends on how you're saying it. It's like, oh, you're sick, bro. Or like, oh, you're sick, bro. Like, you right. know, it, yeah, exactly. it depends on the delivery. Uh, real quick, uh, DL, Deranged Lunatics, as for $1.99, announcing Star Wars new failure at <laughs> work. Good Lord, you know, you know, it's true. Yep. Bra Bradley Burnett for five says Darth Trump builds the best Death Stars. Darth Trump's Death Star would not have a small thermal exhaust port right <laughs> below the main port. Oh, God. He's on to something, though. That That's true. See, <laughs> I am wondering, though, if they're because this. OK, so Cassian Andor is kind of like, well, it's not. he. Well, he's Latino. So, yeah. and um, like as and Gary and them like are always making fun, like this is going to be about the rebellion. Like, you know, like they're just, you know, they're just talking about that. Right. And so like, I was like, I'm just wondering if now that they brought Trump into it and this was like made like, a few years ago that if they're going to actually put the wall in there, like it's like just going to be about the ball, yo. Like, you know, mm, the, the wall. Maybe that's why they and they off. did mention refugees as well. So like, I'm wondering if they're going to be doing that whole. Who, who built the wall? Who built the wall, Joe? <laughs> who built you know, the wall? still talking about how Mexicans going to pay for it. I laugh at that every time. I'm like, I, I would rather our Mexico money go to the wall than shit. Ukraine. I'll tell you that. Um, seen some atrocities that ukrainians are doing to their own citizens it's nightmare i've seen that too it's horrifying dude it makes me want to like share those posts on anyone with a ukraine flag in their in their profile name it's like i just want to post that shit i know are you, are you defending this like do you see this shit you're this gonna what get they've been... kicked off so fast bro i don't get oh, man i'm i'm running out of patience with these people it's like that's what they've been doing for seven years. For seven years they've been doing that. And they, no. they asked Russia for help and Russia said, okay. Like, and that's what we're supposed to vilify Russia for, for going to help these people from getting killed by their own government. Like, yeah. that's what, that's why, why do you think the American government's so about them? They're like, oh, we got to protect because it's like, that's shit. We're, we want to do that. You know, we just, yeah. we have America to get, world police. We have to get rid of all of their, their uh, guns first because America can't, but Americans can actually fight back. That's God. the fucking point of 2A, by the way. God damn it. God, Adam, you need to get yourself one of Chrissy Mayer's rooting for Putin shirts. Because I think I, I need I, to. I think I need yeah, to. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could rock one of those. I, I would I'm definitely not, I'm rock not rooting for him. I'm, I'm rooting for America. I, I, oh, I, your I mom's telling you to be careful. Oh, God. what Mom. Adam, Thanks, Mom. Careful. I'm an adult. Thank you, though. <laughs> Don't. T don't say that shit. Get out of here, mom. If you're if you're gonna do oh that, oh my god, get out, that was get funny. Here. My mom does that kind of stuff too, and I'm like, does what tell you not to come in the chat? <laughs> it's like, are you serious? You're telling me to be careful? Like, maybe I'm good. she's just saying be careful not to get kicked off of places because oh that's why god. I said that too. Because uh, I want listen, you to stick around listen, on Twitter. Nina, <laughs> listen, pop, mama, Selfishly. Nina. All right, all right. Aww. Listen here. Right. About to, I'm about to just so bounce sweet. out of here. <laughs> he's like that's it i'm out this shit's some this this is so cringy though My changing goodness. the topic to bird up super chat for five says uh <laughs> we have the best eight we have wait, the best what? att's at oh, there you go can you do it can you do the rest people have been saying they're the best at ats i can't do <laughs> trump very well i don't know oh i can do trump okay we have the best at and t's People have been saying that they're the best ATGs. Wait, ATATs. -A you said AT&T and then you I went AT&T's. 
You said it wrong both times. Isn't it ATST or ATs? What the hell is that? What is that? Walking the guys with the walking legs. Oh, in on uh, indoor. ATAT. Oh, is that? Oh, is that what? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh no, that's the four. It's the le- the dogs. The four. It's a legs. dog thing. Yeah. Wait. That's see, I used A-T. to have. Hold on. Do I still have it? Ah, yes, I do. This is why Trump is going to be the best thing ever for Star Wars. Okay, we're going to save it. We're going to make it better. We're going to make Star Wars great again. It's going to happen. Um, that was my Trump. <laughs> Oh man, you have a day um, job, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I do. Hey, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm a good voice actor. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, is that I is that what your mom <laughs> tells you? <laughs> no. Well, I'm not surprising because she's probably honest with you. Yes, yes, she is. Hey, <laughs> hey, I can do other voices like Ralph. Um, I can do Ralph from The Simpsons. I, I brought like- my Wookie. Everyone can do Ralph. No, you can you can, you can do it. Say it. I'm in danger. <laughs> you did do it. Everyone can do Ralph. It's so not easy. Everybody. I don't not everybody. Not everybody. I, I okay. find it easy. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, oh my god. Okay. Wait, where were we in this? Rebellion are still built on hope. Somewhere we're lost somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I'm lost in this freaking article. Within the Star Wars from the Hogwarts, blah, 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 Rogue One's powers and the fact that an entire ensemble cast, blah, blah, blah. To add to the story, there needs to be a reason. It certainly sounds like Andor has a found a reason in Tony, uh, Tony Gilroy's tale. Following the release of Rogue One, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much it. There you go. Star uh, we Wars. Got, they got the point across. Yeah, it's going to be it. anti-Trump shit. And it's like, you know, when they do this kind of stuff, they're alienated half of their audience, right? It's instantly saying half of you are evil, half of you are the obviously the empire. So uh, mm. y'all are evil, uh, so you shouldn't support us. It's like that's not a very good business tactic. It reminds me of Jordan uh, in the in the documentary The Last Dance about the Bulls. Now I, I'm from Chicago, so I, I was obsessed with it. I, it was so good. Great documentary. And, in the early 90s, when he had his first shoe deals going on, or maybe late 80s, I think is when it first happened, there was like a black Democrat running to beat the Republicans. And they were like, Jordan, you you should come out and support. He's black like you. So mm-hmm. you should support him. And he's like, the f- no, what? no. Why would I do that? Like, no, Republicans buy shoes, too. And it was Republicans like Republicans sh- buy shoes, too. That's a famous line, man. I love that line. I, I love that. It's so good because it's, why would he why would he alienate half of his audience when he's not political? He's what does he do? He plays sports. He plays basketball and he's the best at it. And he, and he earned it because that's all he did. He mm-hmm. didn't think about politics. He thought about getting the ball in the hoop no matter what and winning. Definitely. Like, that's it. It's like, uh, speaking of basketball players, uh, rest in peace, Bill Russell, one of the greats. I oh, yeah, Bill Russell. That's right. Yeah, that, um, yeah, one of my favorite that, players that of thing. all time. I didn't really know Bill Russell. Uh, he was fantastic, man. Great. Celtic. I believe you. It's great. I, as um, I just said, I, I was a Bulls guy. So No, of course. Yeah. I mean, I... I'm not American. I just love basketball. So I always like picked whatever team I liked at the time, you know, you know, cause like teams sure. always change with your favorite players kind of thing. And yeah. I was never around when Bill Russell was around, but when I like, because you know, he's so much older, he was long retired when I started watching basketball, mm. like seriously. But the first team that I rooted for was uh, the 2008 Celtics team with uh, uh, KG, Kevin Garnett uh, and uh uh, Paul Pierce, and then they won that year against Kobe and the Lakers. Uh, and through that, because I became a Celtics fan, I learned all about their history and I learned about Bill Russell and you know oh, all cool. that kind of stuff. So whenever I like rooted for a team, nice. I would learn about like their entire history. That's and of cool. course, I knew about Michael Jordan because he's like the best player of all time. Yeah, he's uh, good. I still think he's goat. Um, oh yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yes. Rest in peace, Bill. Love Bill. Um, yes, the secretary of defense. That's right. Boosh knows. Boosh knows what's up. Uh, so yeah, Star Wars is saved, y'all. Uh, like always. Uh, did you hear about Batgirl being canceled? I thought that was kind of weird. Is what's as gonna do for money now? 
<laughs> hey, that's love, only love one you, movie. Adam. It's okay. It's okay. He has others. He has. Oh Sheeta. wait, it's a movie. I thought it was a show. No, this one. This one is the movie. Oh, uh, they were the gonna do a movie Bat and they canceled Girl. that. But they did okay. cancel the other one too. Batwoman. <laughs> they also canceled that. Um, oh. This is the Batgirl movie. Uh, the directors came out and put in a statement today saying that they were saddened and shocked after the movie is shelved. It is a little shocking because they spent like $90 million on it or something like that. And then to shelf it the way they did is a little shocking. But there's just so much yeah, going wow. on over there uh, because there's management change and people are getting fired left Wait, and right. Who, who is doing this? CW? I think Zabla? WB? Yeah, are WB. they the same thing? Yeah. No, no, no. Not CW, uh, uh, not see, CW, I don't, WB. I don't, I don't fucking know. No, it's WB, and there, it, it was What's supposed to be for HBO. Warner, <laughs> Warner Brothers versus CW. CW is uh, like the the channel. Warner Brothers is the movie studio. Okay, okay. Right? CW is totally different. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Warner Brothers, um, they, in association with HBO, they put their, like, HBO distributes Warner Brothers uh, movies. Uh, and uh, so that's that's what was going on. And then there's been management changes uh, in Warner Brothers very recently. And they're just very, very just wanting to kill themselves, in all honesty, because DC is a fucking hot mess. Yeah. Uh, you got Amber Turd, uh, that all that drama with Aquaman 2. And you got The Flash with Ezra Miller being just insane. Uh, and then, and then you had this. This was their other project. They they kind of like went crazy, and they were like, "We're you know we're making all the stops. We want to bring back Michael Keaton. We want to bring back Brendan Fraser. We want to bring back all these people." Uh, and then, and then it got shelved. And it's it's kind of a mystery, really, why at this point. Um, but other than the fact that apparently they did some screenings and it did not go well. Oh, wow. uh, so other than that, uh, we, like. It's anybody's guess. Like I, I think there's been management changes. There's been a lot going on, and then is that, that is happened. that the same company that had to deal with uh, Ezra Miller? Yes. So and uh, they still do, and I think they've just kind of because the media went dead silent, like on Ezra Miller after why? we heard about the grooming news, uh, and after we heard about after we heard about the 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 mother and the kids that were on his property. Yeah. After that, have you heard a word about no. Ezra Miller? Google no, him no. right now. If you Google him right now, I don't. The Google last shit. thing you probably, well, whatever, whatever thing you do, you, you use. Are you brave? Yandex, brave, whatever. If Ezra you Miller. Do, if IMDb, you, yeah, you will Wikipedia. see that there's literally like every article is from like two months ago. They have not said a word about Ezra Miller. It's just been like dead silent because they're doing some sort of yeah, damage right. control. Two months, holy shit! Zero news. Uh, and so there's there's definitely damage control happening. But real quick, America the free, holy baloney! Hey, that deserves a bell ring. Thank you, man. Love you, Nina. Missed you. I miss you too, America the free. Thank you. That deserves a spin. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this for you. Oh, hold on. I need to see this better. Wait, wait. Keep doing it. Yay! <laughs> Why is this? I didn't even mean to do that. I'm like, yay! <laughs> like, I'm so happy. Uh, I've seen things before, Adam. I've seen things. Um, <laughs> it's like, there's this Persian saying where when somebody reacts to something, like, way too excited, and, like, it's like a... There's no direct translation, but it's like, what are you from like behind the mountain? Like you've never seen something before. And you know, the person's like, I've seen things. <laughs> yeah. So like trying Wait, to do can that. You say it? Can you say it how they would? Like in the original. Day. Like that Nadi Day. It's like nah, <laughs> Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Sounds cool. Um, so yeah, thank you, America the Free. You're awesome. And I love your name. And look, he's got a little little pig. Oh, so cute, so cute. Oh, um, and cute. then Bradley, Bradley Burnett for five says, Darth Trump is saying, wait, join the dark side. We have the best taco salads. Even Juan Solo agrees. <laughs> That's good. 
<laughs> Woo! I did it. I did Good it. for you. Patrick T for $4.99 says, not your fault. Why do Mexicans hate Thanksgiving? They don't. They love Thanksgiving. Um, my friends and I have had, a, like, because they actually don't really know what Thanksgiving is in Mexico. So, okay. Because they're like it's a, it's a cultural thing, right? So they they've never they never had pilgrims. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So like they they didn't know what what it was. So when I when I moved here, I started doing like an annual Thanksgiving thing. So now we're it's kind of like a friendsgiving now. So we're doing annual friendsgiving. Like this is the sixth year that's happening, and they absolutely cool. love it. They love the turkey they love stuffing they love all the food any excuse to drink and party they're all about it and do you eat. make cranberry sauce hell yeah hell yeah um sweet potatoes mashed potatoes sweet potatoes sweet potato sweet potato pie we got pumpkin mm. pie all the mm. good stuff oh you do oh. it all oh all we right, do nice. it all we do i i love apple pie though because i don't like pumpkin pie too much so Pumpkin pie for the husband, okay. apple pie for me. I like like one bite of pumpkin pie and then I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> me too. I'm the that's same it. way. Oh, one bite. That's what it tastes like. Yeah, I'm, good. I'm done now. Thank you. <laughs> but I'll, so don't get me wrong. I'll enjoy that one bite. But me I too. wouldn't enjoy I wouldn't enjoy the second bite. No, me too. And I like I like pecan pie too, but only for like one or two bites. And then it's like, no, bring on the yeah. apple. Next. Yeah, apple pie. That's so uh, but this year, I, we might do something different this year because there's a really amazing Asian restaurant that just opened here. So we might do like a Thanksgiving feast of Asian food. Just sounds good. Do it up totally different. I like Asian uh, food. I like Asian food too. It's freaking oh, amazing. Yeah. And the guy that made it is actually from Vancouver. Like he moved to Cancun and he opened an Asian restaurant. And I'm like, I love you because I missed Vancouver Asian food. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's actually really, it's a really good Canadian Thanksgiving's no cover. Yes, it is. Uh, you guys sell. But I, I celebrate mine the American way because nobody has time to do two Thanksgivings. Um, okay. So drop uh, like breaking news, by the way, you guys breaking news. This was the breaking news this evening. Um, Good Lord. Marvel's Ironheart casts RuPaul's Drag Race finalist Shia Kole as Disney Plus series regular. Yay. Aren't huh? you super excited about this, Adam? Huh? I'm sorry. This, this what? person is going to be in the that new dude? Ironheart. That dude's going to be Iron Man? No, no. It, I think they're a series regular, whatever that, what that means. What does that mean? I think that means they're like a second or third character, like a like a side character. Oh, I think, I think. unless they cast as Ironheart, in which case, my God, I, Iron I Trans, Trans Iron Man, Trans I Iron. Man. Honestly, I'm at this point where like I just don't care. I don't. I don't give a shit. And I, I feel like most most people need to take that because like by even talking about it, it's like more people are you're you're giving it light. You know, it's like mm -hmm. that's why I don't talk about, you know, when there's like a shooter doing some shit like I'll talk about the victims. I'll talk about the tragedy, but mm -hmm. I don't talk about who they are. I don't talk. I don't say their name. I don't say any of that shit. It's like this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of the same thing. It's like who fucking gives a shit? Like I'm done that. too, man. Are, is anybody too. are you going to watch Ironheart? No. Is this going to make you want to watch it more? No. no. So like who f fuck that. Fuck Marvel. Fuck these yeah, people fuck that think they know what we want as people who have made Marvel who it is. They don't have any idea. Well, let know? me ask you this, keep, Adam. Keep what, losing money, bitches. What was the last <clears throat> MCU movie or show that you watched? Have you watched any? Um, I watched the first season of Wanda Vision. Mm-hmm. Or is there only one season? I There's don't know. only there one season, okay, unless that. you count Doctor Strange two. And, and the I was movie, very disappointed. Which is like the second season I have. Of I haven't seen that yet. Um, but I that's that's basically the second <clears throat> season of WandaVision without oh, okay. Vision. <laughs> There's no Vision in it, but Dude, it's basically the second season. I I really like Paul Bettany a lot. I, I think he's a an awesome actor and he's really talented. I don't know what his political views are, and I'm happy for that. Because, like, 
I don't know. Maybe he's, maybe he's announced it, but who fucking cares? Well, you're you're cares. an actor. Mm-hmm. Just, just act. Don't mm-hmm. don't give me your political view. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's like I don't want to know. It, unless I choose to follow you and you are just being open about your shit. Like, I feel like that's one thing. Like, I mentioned Gina Carano, right? Sure. She she wasn't going on interviews and like trying to like make a statement. She just mm-hmm. posts shit on Twitter. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. Look okay, at she just, this person's don't facing. follow her then. Don't don't follow her then. You know, if you don't yeah. want to hear her, what she has to say, but it's like, <clears throat> I don't follow a lot of actors on social media because I don't want to fucking hear their opinions. You know, I know because they're all like, well, most of the actors are like very tedious. Like that's right. one of the reasons I I like kind of like I'm I'm kind of down on Star Wars altogether now because like Mark Hamill turned out to be such a douche. Yeah. Even though I love the OG Star Wars, I'm just and like I'm, shit- I'm having a hard time dissociating Dude, now. I'm just Mark like Mark Hamill shit on the new Star Wars. He called him Jake Skywalker. Yeah. He and did. not Luke because he's like that's not Luke. Yeah. It's like bro, why didn't you stick Why'd with you that? Yeah. And it's, yeah. And then until Disney probably told him like yo, you need to shut the fuck up and get with the program. <laughs> Or we're gonna yeah. take that money away that we were we promised you, and he's like, "Oh man, all right, Trump bad, Trump bad, horses female." And it's like, there's oh, so God. many, there's so many of them too. There's so many of them that are just like, I mean, and, and it hasn't ended either, Adam. Because the, the weird part for me is the fact that Trump is gone. Like he's gone. He's not no. the president anymore. No, he can run again. They need they need people to stay mad at him. They need um, to continue. Yeah, <clears throat> this this is what it is, right? Trump was the he was the evil. He's the boogie evil man. Guy. He was the, he was the evil face on the wall that they mm-hmm. can point to, mm-hmm. right? When when they lost him, I mean, look at CNN's ratings. As soon as Trump <laughs> left office, yeah. basically they've been going down and continue dropping. Mm-hmm. It's like it, they're nose diving, like yep. If it well, continues, their CNN Plus got canceled or whatever the fuck that shit in, was in under a month. Yeah, Mwah, Chef's kiss. Why? <laughs> because no one fucking gives a shit. No, everyone knows they're lying out their asses to try to like w- whip up people's emotions to try to be mad at the guy on the wall who's gone. So now what? You know. Mm-hmm. But it worked so well that they're trying to. That's why they're dragging on this January six shit because they're mm-hmm. like they're 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 trying to remind everyone that. Trump tried to like overthrow the government, so you can't trust him with the, the keys anymore because they are so desperately afraid that he might actually finish what he started. You know, he trusted the wrong people, and I think Trump may know that now. I mean, he endorsed Dr. Oz. It's like, what are you doing, Trump? What like, are you dude, doing, bro? His big like to me, one of his biggest things that I was like, really? Like he didn't he didn't pardon Julian Assange. I had beef with that, man. I was like, me too. Me too. I was pissed. It's like, bro, I, I kept hoping pissed. that he would do it. Me too. You know, it's like, bro, pardon Assange. Like, please. pardon Assange because that would have been sticking it to the establishment. That would Absolutely. have been sticking it to the to left, Hillary, like, to Hillary and Obama. Like, you know, like the, to yeah, that both administration. Of like, giving, giving them a fucking backhand on the way yeah. out. Like, fine. Psh. Yeah. There were certain things that Trump did that I was like, man, what? Like, dude, I don't know if he knew, like, because he was like, you know how he's like, I'm going to clean the, the uh, drain the swamp or whatever. I don't know yeah, if he knew he how do swampy the swamp was. Like, I I don't know. Like, maybe he realized, like, when he went in, he was like, whoa, like, I didn't I didn't realize how bad it really was. Uh, that and then the other thing was that he like, I mean, killer is still around. Like, I mean, never. You know how he was all like, I'm going to arrest that bitch, you know? Like, and I was like, okay, let's go. Like, let's see, let's see right. some arrests. Let's see some people behind bars. Uh, nothing. Like, I mean, I, I kind of understand in a way because I think that, like I said, like, I think he went in kind of like, I can't say he's innocent because I mean, it's Donald Trump and mm-hmm. he's probably seen some ish before that, but I don't, but he wasn't a politician. You know, once you start actually dealing with politicians and then you realize how crazy, dirty some of these people are and yeah. what is actually going on, uh, I don't like if the fight becomes kind of. That's like almost it's like, uh, it's like seeing gangrene on the nails mm-hmm. and going, oh, shit, we got to get rid of that gangrene. And then you get rid of the nail and then you see that it's actually in the bone. 
-hmm. and then you're like try you're trying to like get rid of it all the way up then you find out it's actually all the way up the arm yeah like, hey, but you don't see it here but it yeah. was you saw it here but not in the bone all the way in the arm and then you find out it's actually literally ev like everywhere the entire body but you just can't see it you know you just mm -hmm. see like the hands are bad like oh well those hands have to go but then you realize that the entire body is affected with this shit and it's like yeah that's essentially uh the government right now pretty much uh patrick t for 499 says thanks uh, thanksgiving started with abraham lincoln's proclamation during the civil war uh it was meant for healing oh that's lovely that's lovely um that's kind of like that's what i told the mexicans <laughs> <laughs> It was all good. Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't I, I like Thanksgiving to me. I just kind of whenever anyone says says stuff about it, I'm like, you give thanks every day, right? Yeah. Like I, I try to give thanks all the time. Uh, and I feel like I'm happier for it because I, I, do, I, I do that, too. I like realize how much I have and like how grateful I am for my life. Mm -hmm. So like Thanksgiving people are thankful they they take one day a year to like say what they're thankful for like i don't care what it's based on in the past mm -hmm. like everyone has their own view of like where it came from whatever but like it doesn't matter we're here and and i see so many people that just use it as the one day they give thanks for what they have and it's like that's such a weird thing because like i give thanks all the time I, daily i'm walking around and i'm like i love my life i tell mm -hmm. my wife all the time i'm like i'm so grateful for you it's like that's how it should be. You should be grateful for what you have when you have things. It's like having one day and like not being grateful, being jealous of other people. And it's like, that's the norm for a lot of people. And it's like, mm. if you switch those around, let give yourself one day a year to bitch about other people. And then the rest <laughs> of the time, maybe just focus on how much you have. Like, I think the world would be a better place. Probably. You know? You're you know? probably right. Yeah. Um, that's, that it's, that, that you know, what's called? weird is my husband like doesn't like birthdays. Like he's never been a Me birthday neither. guy. I but hate he, my birthday. He always says like he had this quote where he, he would always say, treat every day like it's my birthday and treat my birthday like every other day. And I was all it, that, that always so blew my mind. And I was like damn it like you know like like make me feel special like every day don't make that one day like my special day like treat me like a like you know and, and i was like that's i don't know i mean now, wait, I'm, me, I'm different because well, i, wanna, I love birthdays about that. i'm curious about it. i want to because i'm actually very similar to that i don't like on my birthday i want to be left alone i want to do my own thing <laughs> i, I want to just like i don't want to be celebrated i just want to <sighs> chill but like when it's my when when it's nisha's birthday Mm -hmm. I want I want to celebrate her for like the week. Like Aww, actually, he's for, like for, that about me too. For this, and I'm like, yes, yeah, celebrate I made her me. Breakfast every morning for like the entire week, and I just Aww. like kept whispering like, don't get used to this, but happy birthday! It's your birthday week. I like celebrating people's birthday if they're close to me, you know. Oh uh, um, yeah, for sure. Uh, my husband's me, been doing that too, like dude. yearly after like year after year too. Like I feel like it's gotten like longer, so now it's like birthday month, and I'm like, yeah. I'm fine with it. Like I'm nah, like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that's too much. You don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. It's a Why? week. Spoil nah. her. Spoil her. I I think I do. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> no, because then it then it it it's not that it's spoiling her. It's spoiling the it, it's it's diluting. Mm -hmm. what you're doing yeah you know it, it's so suddenly it's it becomes it's normal and special it's, yeah, it's, yeah yeah exactly it's yeah, not yeah. as special and it's like no, no. I know what you mean. one I week know what you is mean. like it, it you know it's like it isn't just one day it's like one full week that that's nice you know because then that's a little more memorable like man seven well, days in a row go somewhere like if you take like a birthday trip or something, yeah, you, you know, and you go for like a little yeah. mini holiday somewhere for a week. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's my birthday week. I guess you know, for a holiday, you know. Yeah, I guess That's nice. Those things are nice. Uh, Bradley Burnett, thank you so much for the five. Says Batgirl daughter of J.K. Simmons, Jim Gordon is Latina. Supergirl apparently uh, crash landed in Argentina and became Latina. Sorry, Latinx. Sorry, Latinx. No, you mean Latina. But what the fuck? stop i know it's just i mean it's in everything man it's yeah. literally in everything but this i was talking to comics division earlier about this about how they the these sjw writers activists I, that's what uh eric july was 
basically calls them. They're they are not writers. They're activists because mm-hmm. they're, they're activists. terrible at writing. They can't write for shit. The, the stories are always crap, but and they're always just oh I don't know what to write. Well, let me just put exactly what's going on in reality into my writing, and it's like mm-hmm. that's so fucking <laughs> lazy. Um, and then they can't create characters. They just create check marks that are either exactly who they are Mm -hmm. or exactly who they feel need to be represented and that's it that that's either way it's it's projection past that well and it's so fucking shallow all of the things that they represent it's just like the shallowest shit like i don't fucking care who you sleep with i don't fucking care who your what your skin color is like i don't what kind of a character are you are you a good character are you moral are you, I don't care what's between you have, your legs. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Ding care. Dong, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, it's what you do that defines you. Like, that's, you know, famous Batman quote. I like it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, damn. Like, y- you guys make it, you make your sexuality literally everything. And that's it. And so that in itself is so shallow. I don't give a shit. Like, mm-hmm. who fucking cares? I don't know and no one does and that's really what most people are saying like can you stop no one cares and they're like you don't care about me <laughs> yeah, basically. yeah and Bush Bush McFadden is so right here this is about like the the article we were just checking out two mm-hmm. seconds ago for five bucks says she is going to uh, teach 15 year old Riri about touching and her body and her pronouns just like uh, a California drag show woo diversity that I mean, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's in the show. I would not be surprised at this point. Uh, But see, these, okay, the thing about it that really just kind of hits at home for me is this article here that I I came across today. And I was like, see, this is where we're at. This is where we're at with the woke next level stuff. Uh, It says writer and coach 29 reveals that she was told she's not truly black after writing a viral open letter blasting the cult of the wokeness and insisting she's not oppressed by her skin color. Now, this is the picture of the lady uh, and and her name is literally uh, like her last name's Africa. uh, And people are telling her that she's not black enough. Um, A writer and coach has revealed how she faced backlash over a viral viral letter, letter in which she said, "I'm not oppressed because I'm black." Africa Brook, tw- uh, that's her first name. Sorry, Africa Brook, uh, 29, who lives in London, spoke to uh, Diary of the CEO host Stephen Bar- uh, Bartlett about her views on race and what it really means to be oppressed for his popular podcast. The writer and coach special uh, uh, specializes in helping people and groups with personal or professional challenges related to self uh, censorship and self sabotage and has 229,000 followers on Instagram. Last year she wrote an open letter declaring that she was leaving the cult of wokeness that insists uh, that insists that she will forever be oppressed because she's black while others told her that she's not truly black. Um and then Africa who was born in Zimbabwe uh told Steve I've I've seen real oppression, adding that she is a huge advocate of FGM. FGM stands for female genital mutilation and happens in many African countries. The barbaric procedure that uh, involves the removal of the clitoris often without, well, we know what that is. Africa said, I said that I, uh, Africa said that I don't feel oppressed as a black woman. And a lot of people didn't agree with me. They didn't like it. Many people thought I was under, uh, undermining black people and women. It's something non-controversial, but in it is now seen as a controversial statement to make. Uh, I was uh, messaged mainly by white people telling me that I'm oppressed, <laughs> but I wasn't raised to be a victim and I refuse to be one. Dude, I love this woman. Fuck. I yeah. know. I want to interview her. She sounds freaking amazing. Hell yeah. Uh, Culturally or in my family home, I have never for once or for one second, apart from the moments I needed to misplace my rage, has seen myself as a victim. For me, it's not even a conscious decision. I don't uh, walk around the world thinking my skin color is a burden and that's not the that's not the only truth. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm aware I have experienced things because of my skin color, but I'm a powerful being in a black body and I should be able to claim that power. People always want to hear the hardship stories when it comes to race. What if there isn't one? When I when I get interviewed, I get asked about the color of my skin instead of being 
a black entrepreneur, why can't I just be an entrepreneur? And this, my God, Adam, this is how, like, yes. I wish I had one of those. Africa, if you happen to see this clip, thank you. That yes. is that is it exactly. And you are an entrepreneur. Why why are you because they think it's they think it's some sort of badge of honor of mm -hmm. like rising above because you're black. Because yep. because of that, then it must have been harder to become an entrepreneur. No, being an entrepreneur is difficult. You have to work yes. for it. Anyone who becomes a successful entrepreneur should just be that's what they should be recognized for. Not because of their adding like the pronoun, the the race pronoun, mm -hmm. like cool. Yeah, so it's stupid. like it's like that's always been the thing for, with me as well. Like whenever I've been, a, there's been a lot of times, especially in Canada, because Canada loved doing this, like because they they want to, you know, they want to virtue signal all the time and pretend like you oh, know they course. do so much stuff for like immigrants or like people of color or like you know especially women or like whatever. So it, whenever I achieved something, it was always like you know first Iranian woman that slash you know whatever like it was always something iranian like you 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 achieve this because you're iranian and you're 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 like an immigrant or like you know you're right. whatever it is and you know it's always because of that i'm like why can't i just be a person like i don't i don't want to be i don't want to be associated with my skin color or where i was born i just want to yeah. be associated with whatever it is that i've achieved uh and that's you know that's the thing um that i, I uh i have a buddy his name his name is the Frank. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, there, no, no, no. Go ahead. You You're done. fine. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he just love this guy. He's one of my favorite humans on the planet. He was telling me about his idea of the year of firsts, mm -hmm. the year of firsts. And that is where we as human beings have one year mm -hmm. where we just get it, all of the firsts out of the way. Oh, my God. Yes. First, first black trans woman on the moon like literally just i just get it over with crazy literally everything <laughs> yeah. anything if you you know if you've already if there's already been something you can't do it it's we got to get rid of all of the first so that after that it's all about meritocracy again bring it back to meritocracy yeah. because right now it's like it somehow like she said it's black entrepreneur what's it like to be a black entrepreneur and it's like mm -hmm. Why do you have to add that I'm black? Like, why not just ask me about being an entrepreneur? Yeah, like, why can't beautiful. I just be that? Exactly. <laughs> why do they always? And, you know, it's like they don't ask, uh, you know, white people about being a white entrepreneur. It's black entrepreneur. So as if it's some sort of like hold like hold back. And that's that's subliminal to like mm -hmm. reminding them that they are they are less than that's fucking Democrats. That's those pandering assholes that mm -hmm. believe that they are less than, that they do need help, that they do. But fucking Oxford in 2020, I still can't get over this, this shit forever. Well, because of the whole George Floyd, they're like, all of our black students, you don't have to do as much work. Oh, as, yeah. As, as I remember else. that. I remember because that. Because I know it's a hard, I know it's this race shit. So, you know, you only have to do 80% of the 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 required work to graduate this college it's like what you that doesn't make any sense you, you're announcing that to the world that these people didn't work as hard to get their thing and that these people hey oh by the way you, you don't have to work as hard because you won't be able to do everything that everyone else will it's like how right. fucking demeaning is that shit I mean, it's like, you know, I understand if they if they went like, OK, we're shutting the school down and, you know, like the like the, the couple of days that it happened, like r like when it was really fresh, like like we're, we're going to close down the school for two days. Everybody gets two days of bereavement, you know, deal with your issues and then you come back and it's like, you know, regular fucking business. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, oh, yeah, that I would understand. But like, you know, this what you just said fuck that okay like you know everybody else has to work hard like everybody else has to you know everybody has to deal with death on some level like people are dealing with death every day like people's yep. you know parents grandparents whatever family members friends people die every day like it, 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 what the fuck you know <laughs> someone someone actually um charlie stevenson just said why not three-fifths it that's that is honestly how the democrats treat them that mm. you that you are less than a person that you need extra help that that i mean i know you're you're 
bringing it back from the three fifths compromise, but it's like that's actually how they're treated. They literally treat them like they they need that extra oomph of help that they need, you know, it, like it's some somehow harder for them to do become an entrepreneur than mm -hmm. anyone else mm -hmm. because of their skin color. And it's like that kind of attitude is disgusting. Yeah, it's 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 gross. It's racist. I, I, I you know, and I don't understand how they don't see it. You know, mm -hmm. I, they they think that it's a virtue signal. And yeah. it's gross. It's like, it oh, yeah. it's weird. It's it weird. Is. Um, Adam, I know you have to go soon. Yeah. But really quickly before you go, okay. give me your thoughts on this whole ordeal with Jon Stewart and how he was like freaking oh, yeah. losing his absolute mind. Yeah. So this this thing. Yeah. So the, it, it, honestly, it revolves around this bill that is it, it which. All right. So let me say Jon Stewart has been fighting for veterans for a long time and i respect mm -hmm. what he's doing with that i don't respect some of the decisions that he's made over the past decade as far as doing i mean he did a freaking episode on like talking about white people as stupid shit you know oh my god he did but, he, oh man it was it was Unless so I bad that one uh, yeah, <laughs> oh my good. god i'm you know but he used to be funny Mm -hmm. I, I, I he still is kind of funny sometimes he's got his I, moments now but he used to be a lot funnier like back in the day before yeah. trump he was way funnier so so this bill um of course the democrats as they always do would say well if we're gonna pass a bill that everyone's gonna get behind because it's for veterans we're gonna mm -hmm. do some shit so that we can you know manipulate a little more power in our in our favor Mm -hmm. And they they did. They slipped some shit in there and, and tried to, like, change it. So, OK, it's like I don't know the exact details of the bill. Um, I, I kind of just was viewing this at, at, from an outside. I never really uh, intended to do a, a segment on it. So I don't mm -hmm. uh, have all the details of the bill itself. Uh, but it had something to do with like four hundred billion dollars. That is like mandatory spending versus like. I don't remember the other word discretionary maybe or something like that, where mm -hmm. they could basically choose to go to put that money anywhere. So it's like sure. they could have, you know, all right, for this year, we're going to give it to the veterans. But then next year we can kind of choose to give it somewhere else. So some, no. some shit like that. I, I, I you know, I wasn't it's a slippery slope. Right. It was like and and so John Stewart was mad that the Republicans finally were like, uh, this is not what we agreed on like this is not okay like not mm -hmm. fuck this like we're not gonna and they didn't pass it so he he fucking flipped out on ted cruz and ted cruz was like he did a video he's like look john i think you're a funny guy i think you're 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 misunderstanding why i we as the republicans didn't want this bill to pass and he he explained it to me or explained it to you know he posted a, a video on twitter but he was talking to john stewart he tagged him um and then they were down in Congress in, in D.C. John Stewart was there. And I saw. Yeah. Raheem. And that's the so, that's the one I saw. Well, I saw this thing where he was like just going insane. And I was like, this guy doesn't even seem to know what the what the hell he's talking about. Well, because be, honestly, a long speech, so we're not going to watch that. But look, when people are in their emotions, mm -hmm. I, I love that phrase. I learned that from Eliza Blue. When people are in their emotions, they are uh, very easily manipulated number one yes. mm -hmm. and it's very hard for them to uh understand logic okay yeah. Th those two things because they're seeing and, red it's like wearing rose yeah. colored glasses and they're just seeing red and mm -hmm. it feels like john stewart this was something that he's been fighting for a long time mm -hmm. and then it was swept out from under him and was told it was the republicans fault and then saw a video of them like fist bumping so he like he kind of did he saw red and was like ah. mm -hmm. okay yeah current veterans bill has it was about 400 billion yeah in unspecified democrat spending exactly like what unspecified spending like we were gonna send it to ukraine so it could be laundered back into your fucking they were pockets. gonna they're probably gonna send it to like oh, pakistani uh yeah uh, what was it gender gender studies <laughs> gender studies yeah fucking bullshit no but you know what i got a lot of respect you know raheem uh fuck what is raheem's last name i want to say uh right, this dude right here right let me see i have him here raheem kasam yeah, Raheem Kassam. Yeah, that's he, right. He's great. Uh, but he saw he saw that John Stewart was there. Tagged, 
tagged uh, Jack Posobiec, and they were yep. they were communicating. And this is before they went down there. Oh, I, I didn't actually know that they were going going to go down, but they were like, "Just John Stewart's down there. We should go talk to him." Mm-hmm. And like, and then the next thing I know, they did. And then of course, all these people are posting these videos of um, John Stewart raging, and I'm yeah. like. Wow, he really is raging. Like, dude is going crazy and not letting Jack Posobiec speak, who was being very calm, which is mm-hmm. key in these kind of situations, which I think is what led to the video that then people started sharing. And I I got I know people are like, You're wrong about Jon Stewart. He's he's gaslighting all it's like, bro, for someone to go from that enraged to to then making a video where you're actually talking and shaking hands with Jack Posobiec saying we actually agree we should try to work together to pass this for the veterans because that's all nobody is saying no the veterans shouldn't get help like right not let me, me. Like, let me I play this her. like 13 second video so people the know you, like how crazy he was being can you hear it we already went there he said no he does not want to meet with us he does not want to meet today he does not want to meet with let's do it let's do it that wasn't even the crazy one. No, that wasn't it. Yeah, uh, he 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 was basically calling that. That's the one. I think that's the one. Over the line. No, no, no. These no, people no, have suffered no, for fifteen years because no, you're a no, fucking troll. No, no, look at them in the face. Look I, at them in you're the face. a troll. Guys, I'm not a good face. Right. I'm for the right. bill. You're not a good face. He's like I'm. In, I'm right. for the bill. <laughs> He's like I, I know. Pause it. Pause it. I'm not even. He was saying I'm a veteran. I'm for the bill. Yeah. I I want to give these guys help. I want to explain to you mm-hmm. why uh, <laughs> this shit, it, you know, like why it is the way it is. Like it's the Democrats that are pulling some shit. You know what I mean? No, I he was like in a lot of cocaine. That's what, that, that's what was going on. I think uh... I, I think I think he was. I think it's because of how passionate he is about it. He's been I think so. Too, I've though. been watching him for over a decade. Trying to get I have to. I have to. You know? I will say this. I when I saw this video, though. Look, yeah, this you one. can say a lot about a man, okay? But someone who takes the time to admit that they may have been wrong and no, that they know, were them- wrong, that they were wrong, yeah, and they, and they calm themselves down and they compose themselves and they shake hands with the person that they disagreed with. There's a lot to say for someone like that, and this that, that's why I respect so Jack Posobiec. I'm here with Tim Jensen Grunt style and. Hello. John Stewart is also here. He's so embarrassed. John Stewart and I yep. have decided to come to agreement. Have we not, John? Yes, sir. I lost, called him I lost sir. my temper a little bit. I felt like I was being trolled. And uh, I realized that the important thing is you just got to get this done for these guys and get them over the finish line to get the health care they need. We're at 98%. Let's get it over the last 2%, please. Is Absolutely. that fair? Fair. You shake on it. 7-5, brother. There we go. Do do? And you know what? Respect. If, in all honesty, if... If all, I know this sounds really bad, but if all leftists were like John Stewart, were coming from a good place in the end, like I feel like John John was coming from a good place, is coming exactly. from a good place. Well, he and, humbled himself there. Exactly. There, I have never seen a leftist humble themselves like that ever, mm-hmm. ever. So people are saying, "No, he's a leftist. He's gaslighting." It's like, give me another example where any left left leftist sjw warrior whatever has mm-hmm. humbled themselves to do that yeah i've never seen it ever i haven't either and what is he gaslighting how is he gaslighting me he was enraged and then he he admitted he he thought he was being trolled he probably was didn't honest. he probably didn't even know that jack Posobiec was in the navy mm-hmm. which he's a vet because he's a veteran himself mm-hmm. you know it's like like how how am i being gaslit by john stewart right now i know right. that he had some sjw shit on his show right I did lose some respect for that, yeah. but I, I, that doesn't mean I don't respect him for fighting for the veterans as hard as he has over, over a decade, over the past decade and a half. He was years. also the first one to call out the Vax BS or at least the, you, you know, uh, no, for a lefty, not the, not the Vax. Okay. Like on the, the left the, side, maybe on the yeah. left side. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I meant on the left side, he was the first one to call out like even Stephen well, Colbert where, where it was from about That's where all. it was from. Yeah. That's it. What was going on? I don't want to. I don't want to give him too much credit. No, but, but still, yes, but still, he deserves some credit because at least he's asking some 
questions versus exactly. some other people who are like completely just like this, you know, they, they don't want to see anything else. Yeah. And I think that that kind of gives me a little bit of respect for him. Obviously not a lot, but still some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Someone mentioned 9-11 first responders. Exactly. Like mm -hmm. I've been watching him fight for a long, like he a did. lot. It's true. For a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, everyone has faults. No human is perfect. And exactly. you aren't either. Nobody is. No. I don't give a shit who you are. So it's like yeah whatever dude ha dude has been through a lot said some shitty things but mm -hmm. eh, you know it is what it is and on that note adam thank you so much for being here tonight and hanging out with me it's been a Always. fantastic fantastic pleasure to be with you and uh talk to you again uh so you're always welcome back anytime and tell everybody where they can find you before you go Thank you, Nina. Uh, it is always a pleasure coming on your show. Uh, we laughed a lot and I learned some breaking news about <laughs> some shit I don't care about. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, for those who don't know who I am, I am Adam Krigler. I have The Krigler Show over on YouTube. You can find me uh, just by typing in The Krigler Show. It's written right here. And uh, I go live Monday through Friday. I only do live shows. I don't make clips. I don't do youtube videos i just go live talk about my opinion and i talk to really cool people uh base staff mondays is my monday show i have a lot of awesome people on my show and we're starting to like get some more randoms to come in not randoms they're actually awesome people that are mm -hmm. coming in uh to have great conversations it is turning out to be i a saw party. the last one with uh savannah oh. hernandez that, that was Dude, great that was great savannah show. joined in on yeah. monday she is a freaking boss probably the most based out of all of us all of the uh, the crew would agree is great time. But check us out on Mondays, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I, I try to do a lot of interviews, uh, bringing, you know, more of like a one on one kind of a conversation. And then Fridays, I go live just by myself. I play my guitars behind me. They're not just shows. I actually do play them and I sing. I write all my own stuff. Uh, oh. Fridays is more of a musical show where I hang out and, and read what time do you do your Friday shows, show yeah. at? Same time as always, 6.30 Eastern time. 6.30 and, Eastern, okay. Yep, yeah, so you know, I just kind of hang out with chat and see see what they're all doing, how their week is, just kind of talk. Uh, I've got an awesome chat. Uh, they're very awesome, Aww. and I end up uh, playing. I actually, I made a song about a troll in my chat. You it's did? Called, yeah, it's called Be Offended. Oh, you you want to hear great. it? I I'll do want to hear I'll play it. it for you right now. Are you, you want... gonna play it right now? Yeah, you want me to play? Oh my it? god, let's go! Yes, hell yeah! Little little send off. All right. This Here is called go. be. This is called be offended. Was it something I said that got in your head? Was it something I said that got in your head? Well, guess what? I don't give a fuck. Mm, so shut the fuck up. And be offended. That's basically it. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god, that was amazing. I might have to like clip that. Well, I just came up with it random, so I don't even actually know how it goes. I just I kind of. Oh my of god! Do you it. mind if I clip that <laughs> and like play it for like my trolls? If I see a troll in my chat, can I can I play that for them? Is that is that cool? I guess I I feel like I fucked it up because I don't remember exactly how I played it. I'd have to like go. Listen to it again. That's just what I remember. But either way, by I all means, it was yeah. amazing. Use I thought it, it was that's great. Fine. That's, Hell that's yeah. Cool. That was amazing. <laughs> and uh you got you got wait, where's the other where's the super chat? There it is. Uh Jeff sent a ten dollar super chat just to say for Adam and the good vibes. Thank you so much. Hey, thank much. you, Jeff. And the jams. Thank you so much, Adam. Yeah, it was fun. Check out his channels and it's in the description. There was a guy I, I was talking about China on Friday this whole taiwan china, china thing and and i basically i i jokingly called china west taiwan because that's like that's an <laughs> internet joke that's been around for 
I don't know, years, as mm-hmm. long as I've been like in the internet world, which is like yeah. two years, I've, I've mm-hmm. seen it floating around. So I made that joke and some dude from Illinois who his father was Chinese uh, and is no longer around. And like he was saying, like, that's my heritage. You racist asshole. Like China is China. Taiwan is Taiwan. They're not the same. And I'm like, tell that to the U.S. government. They just yeah. like, they, just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. and he was just like, I was like kind of like poking fun of him. And then he started he was just trying to get me to like talk. And I'm like the fuck it you know what hold on i just picked up my guitar and i just and i played i like made that song up on the spot oh my and, uh, god that's amazing he was so pissed and i'm like was it something i said like what the fuck it's the improv guy? china yeah. is yeah. <laughs> i want i mean everybody yep. knows that i mean that's been a that's been an ongoing thing <laughs> oh there's more to the story too check us out for the for those people in my chat this dude straight up started hitting me up on twitter he went to tim pool's post one of tim's posts and tag me. He's like, yo, you better check your boy. I'm about to sue him for, for his racist anti-Chinese no. rhetoric. I'm like, racist anti what? Like, I, I jokingly <laughs> oh called China West Taiwan, and now I'm suddenly racist and anti-Chinese? Like, fuck you, dude. No, no. I'm anti-CCP. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh like, my what? god. That's dude, so he's He's now threatening to sue me. For defamation. Is that for <laughs> real though? No. I'm not. Do you want me to show you his tweets? Oh my I, god. I, I mean, if you want, yeah. I'm not joking. Like, no. Nah, is he that. being real? Like, is he Yo. trolling you or is he actually no. threatening to sue he you? He was so mad. He was so mad. No, the dude is straight up like trying to he he's telling that he's about to he's gonna start suing me and shit. Oh my God! Get Ricada on this. We need to fund the Kriglers. <laughs> the Look Krigler shows. I'm gonna. Re- this defense. is how. This is what he he said to Tim Pool. Ready? Uh-huh. Hey, better get your boy at Adam Krigler. You know the one who is passively aggressively bringing up your show and constantly talks crap about you, which I very rarely talk about Tim. I don't. And, and do I ever I heard talk, talk about Tim? About Tim. No. Like, dude. I never I, I very, very seldomly do I talk about Tim. Mm-hmm. And if I do talk crap about him, yes, yeah, so what? I'm allowed. He was my roommate. He was kind of a you know, he's a Tim Pool. Keep it straight. Pe- people on line know Tim Pool, like, mm-hmm. and I've know them more than all of the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, he's digging himself a nice big legal hole with the racist shit he said about Chinese people and his fans harassing me doesn't help him. It's like my fans harassing him. Your fans me. harassing him. What? I don't fucking yo, there's some people he's in my chat. Shit up. There he's saying that my chat was attacking him. It's like, bro, you were going crazy and you got so butthurt about some crazy shit of like a simple joke. It's he's like, not talking about Tim Boosh. He's saying that this dude went to Tim and yeah, tagged yeah, him. It's not that's not talking about Tim. Just because how, Tim is involved do I, doesn't mean that. How would I tell the story talking without <laughs> talking about Tim? The dude like anyway. That Nina, dude talked you're... about Tim. Okay. I know. Anyways. He no, he went to Tim's page to like tattletale on me. <laughs> yeah, tattletale Bro, I'll do. Guess what? Is Tim doesn't do give five? a shit. Does, Tim doesn't give a shit about me. Let's be honest. Like No. It's he'll be fine. like, I'm he'll an, be I'm like okay have fun suing Adam. I'll be watching and eating popcorn. That, that's yeah. that's what I would imagine no, Tim would be He's not watching it. He's not going to be watching. He's like, I'm I'm going to go in this room shit. and count my money. I'll go sing to some chickens is what he's going to say. <laughs> uh, uh, love you. Love you, man. Nina, thank you for having me on. I can't wait to come again. Let yes, me know. Yes, definitely. All right. Bye. Peace, guys. Chat, you're the best. Treat her, treat her great because she's awesome, too. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. You guys, that was Adam Krigler. He's amazing. All of his links are in the chat. He's next level. He's a good human. Adam, he's a good human. He's good people. Uh, I really, I, I have, fun, I have a lot of fun talking to Adam. And you know where he is right now? It's pretty late. Uh, and uh, he took the time to come on here, and I really appreciate it. Comics, comics. What's going on, buddy? I watched your show with Adam. It was awesome. It was awesome. I got to have you back on here soon. I got to hit you up. I got to hit you up and have you back on here. Um, and uh, let's talk again very soon. 
it was a it was, it was a fantastic show. Uh, Jeff for two uh, says uh, I just stopped by to say hi and leave a like. Well, thank you. That is so sweet. Everybody else, you guys should do the same thing. Press the like. Thank you. And uh, we had another uh, super chat from TZ Burton for five says I'm a veteran. And I don't want Jon Stewart speaking for me. I mean, I understand that. Uh, I'm a I'm a U.S. Navy veteran and a golf war vet. Well, thank you for your service. Uh, pass a pass a one page bill and read it. Um, are you telling me to do that? Are you, are, you, are you telling me to do them, or are you telling those guys? Well, I think the bill was passed, right? So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, thanks, TZ. That's a I mean, I understand that. I understand. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm going to hit you up very soon. Very soon. Get you back on this show, uh, Breaking the Narrative. Uh, gonna going to talk some politics, talk some, uh, you know, entertainment stuff. Uh, yeah, one day, one day, Brick. Keep working on that channel, buddy. One day soon. Uh, thank you again, TZ, for that super chat. Let's see if I had something else to share with you guys. Uh, I really would love to get that lady on my channel, though. I gotta, I gotta figure out how to get in touch with Africa Brooke, because she's freaking based. Uh, that was great. Oh, this was funny. Hold on, let me show you guys this. This is funny. Uh, this is why, this is why everybody, is, you know, who's shocked about the fact that Ripaverse is making so much money. Who is shocked? Because this is the crap that you're getting now with mainstream comics. DC, dead company. Uh, says, see, you can shoot Joker in the face, but it's, hard, it, but it's much harder to shoot issues like homophobia or sy systemic racism Oh boy, this comic sounds like so much fun to read. Yay. Let's talk about systemic racism with Harley Quinn. Doesn't that sound like fun, you guys? Good fucking Lord. It's like, Really? This is this is why people are like sick of this shit. This is why Ripaverse is making three point five million dollars. Or wait, what's he at now? Is he at three point three? What's he at now? Let's see. Ripaverse.com. Three point three five seven. I mean, this is why. This is why people are like, you know what? Maybe I'll take my business elsewhere. Maybe I'll take my business to here. Because that's what I did. I was like, I'm not interested in your weird comics anymore. Hey, Achilles. Uh, 550 AM here in Germany. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for always tagging me in awesome shit. Hey, Ancient One. Good to see you. Uh, Grumpy, I see you too. Thank you for modding tonight. Let me make sure I didn't have any member chats because... Um, I can never figure out if I have member chats in time. And then I later realize I had member chats. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. Um, but yeah, so that is the case. Uh, what? No, Joseph, is that true? No. I mean... Why, why am I shocked when I hear stuff like that? Uh, why am I shocked? I shouldn't be because that makes sense. Um, okay, I had a couple more things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Let me really quickly. Oh, I, I should have shown this to Adam before he left because this was really funny. Uh, I'm so sad. Oh, wait, there's sex bots in the chat, you guys. Let me block this. Go away, sex bots. Um, hold on. Comics. Comics, do you want to come on now? Because if you're around, I can send you the link. I'm just hanging out. I'm not doing much. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. 
I'm just hanging out for a little bit more because I had a couple things to talk about. So if you want to come on, I'll send you the link. And if you want to come on, you can uh, you can come on. X. If you can't, it's all good because I know it's really light. There it is. Um, let me just really quickly do that. Um, Okay, we're good. Everything's good, people. Everything is good. Okay, yay, yay. We're going to have uh, Comics Division stopping by. All right, great. The link has been sent. So I'll wait for you to come on because this was funny. I was like, what is this? Um, I was like, what is, what is happening? Why? Okay. Here we go. Uh, I sent, I sent you the link. I sent you the link. Uh, I feel like, wait, while he's doing that, I'm gonna pull up something that I should definitely have a clip of, but I don't. Hold on. Let me clip the, or the. I have to get this ready for the next. For, for this thing. I got to clip this for sure for my channel. I just haven't had a chance to do it. Um, here's comics. Hi, comics. Hello. How you doing? Hi, how are you? I just realized my microphone was turned down. Oh, you're good now. Uh. Um, not planning on staying on too long, but uh, thank you for coming to hang out with me. Hi, you're welcome. Uh, so this one here is what I saw. Um, okay, but first I'm gonna play this clip because I mean I would have I would play this clip first, but I I don't have it, so I have to play it from from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this I is about the next sec segment, I not about comics. Sex with men. That guy's nudes for you. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. Me too. Uh, and this is the reason that I'm playing this clip right here. I got news for you. Because this person posted this from the Atlantic first saying, my orgy. first gay orgy, straight men are in a unique position to end the stigma surrounding monkeypox by Tom Nichols. I got well, news for you, Tom. There is there was an article a few years ago, maybe it was a year ago. I don't, I don't remember. It all blurs together after a while. It says straight men are having more gay sex. And I'm like, that's <laughs> yes. Um I that makes no sense. That. I'm pretty sure that just makes you gay, but you know, whatever. I'm pretty sure that makes you gay too. I think if you're having gay orgies or gay sex or somehow sticking into your friend's butt, you gay. You gay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, and then it, and the funny part is that it says misleading, manipulated media. This tweet can't be replied to, shared, or like. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? I don't know. That is so weird. And then in Instagram too, he says, "That's so weird." Well, that's Twitter for you. But that's yeah. that's that's hilarious though. Because apparently straight men are in a uni unique position to end the stigma around my box. Um, but no, 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 thank you. Um, I'm um, not going to have sex with men and I'm uh, not going to get monkeypox. No, it's like, what the fuck? Um, I, I feel like straight men are kind of safe from monkeypox and maybe they shouldn't dabble. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, okay, wait, one more, one more thing about this right here. I actually do have this. Which I could play. <laughs> it's a it's fucking clown world. That's what oh, that's God. what's going on. Um, did you did you see that thing where they're putting trigger warnings on unlikable female protagonist? 
No. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Um th- we were talking about it on the real BBC yesterday, but I don't know what show it was. Uh it was for a movie called Not Okay. Oh. Yeah. Not okay. Not okay. What is that? Not it's okay. a Hulu, it's a Hulu movie, apparently. The movie. Ooh, should we watch the trailer? Yeah, sure. Pull it up. I I I didn't bother checking it out, but uh yeah, I, I just I thought it was funny. It's like uh because apparently the director got a bunch of complaints from she wouldn't specify the demographic, but I'm pretty sure it's women. Uh complaining it's about women. yeah, it's women. Um <laughs> about how they were they didn't like the fact that it was an unlikable female character. And it's just like Yeah. What? That's yeah. hilarious. Okay, well, let's watch this trailer. <clears throat> um, I'll probably have to cut this part out, out, but that's fine. I can cut it out. Okay, here we go. Danny, yeah. Had a chance to read that article you sent me. What do you think? You don't feel like it comes off a little tone deaf, offensive even. I don't feel like you take me seriously as a writer. That's because you're not a writer. You're a photo editor. Okay. Do you know what <clears throat> which character? Do you know which character was about that is disliked? Like, is it Danny? Is it Danny, girl? Is it yes, one? her. Yeah. Oh, okay. All she right. she ends up faking being in like a terrorist attack or something like that, and. That that sounds fucked up. Yeah. All right. All right. Have you ever wanted to be noticed so badly? Hey, mom. You wanna hang out tonight? Oh. You didn't even care what it was for. Colin. Oh shit. What up, honey? Danny from work. Danny. Yo, Colin. I love your videos, man. Thanks, B. What is this movie? What are you? I'm a writer. Wait, that's the guy from. That's the dude from um. The Maze Runner. What's his name? The guy uh, that they're saying that should be the new Flash is this dude. Oh, okay. Dude, what the? F- I mean, dude, he looks awful in this. Like, usually he's really hot. This he now looks like a discount Eminem. I don't. Yeah, why. I kind of get that vibe too. I was wondering if it that's what they're going for, like an Eminem kind of thing. Why would they do this to him? I have no idea. That's fucked up. <laughs> So what are you? I'm a writer. I'm looking to develop my work by traveling. <clears throat> Going to Paris for it. Shit. Hey, get pics. I'm going to get lots of pics. Yeah, I'll throw them all up on the gram. Right. Oh, Shit. my God. She's insufferable. She don't like her. Hey, Mom. I got invited to a writer's retreat in Paris. Yes, really. Starting my morning right. Now, where's my baguette? We have some breaking news at this hour. A string of terrorist attacks struck Paris this morning, leaving dozens dead and many more injured. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, so she's gonna pretend she was like in there? Yep. Danny, she's okay. We are here with the oh, girl God. of the moment. You've been blowing up our Insta feed. Speaking of bombings. I'm really glad you're not dead. Me too. <laughs> Isn't she so strong, everybody? What the hell? Oh my God, you're the girl from the Paris attacks. Let's not forget the signature Fed Beret. Hi, I'm Danny. Rowan. Welcome to group. We're all are you survived. excited for this movie? No. Shares. It just looks dumb, you know. I mean, you're not. Okay. I feel like I'm done. Yeah, I mean, it it, it just looks like stunning and brave. That's well, it looks it, like. I guess they're trying to do like a commentary like on social media, and it just looks dumb, you know. There's a better just, movie with that, actually. Um, with uh, actually with Elizabeth Olsen. Have you ever have you ever heard of that movie? It's um, it's called what's it called? Uh, let's see. IMDb. Olsen uh, social media movie. Actually, really good. It's called Ingrid. Ingrid goes west, and uh, it was about this girl. Uh, this girl here. She was actually the chick from uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. One second. I got a cough. I guess I should say words to make sure that people don't leave. 
but I have not seen Ingrid Goes West. Wow, that's that's a lot of coughing. I had to drink. No. My water. <laughs> I, like, I like choked on my spit and I was like, oh, oh I God. hate that. I hate, I fucking hate that. Yeah, that happens. Ah. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't seen this movie. Yeah, this one's really good because it's about um, this girl and she's psychotic and she like starts stalking this girl, like start like Instagram stalking her. To a point where she like goes and actually stalks her in real life after Instagram stalking her. And it's a really good, it's a really good social media commentary movie. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I'm like choking. Brickhard Castle says, uh, watch a comics good flick. Are you referring to the um Ingrid Goes West or are you referring to the other movie? Because I wasn't making fun of Ingrid Goes West. Uh, I just haven't seen it. No, yeah, that one that one's good. I do recommend XSL. I can't talk anymore. For two, can you read this one? <laughs> uh, yeah, Nina always ends the stream with uh, the Guts theme. Are you talking about um, Guts from Berserk? You're still muted if you're talking. Yeah, it's the it means you're gay thing. That's what it oh. means. Thank God you're here. I'm like choking. <laughs> Oh Here, my God. watch these dancing cats. Why, why I die of uh, asphyxiation? <laughs> I know, right? It's like I, I need a longer clip for these instances. Um, will you read this one too? Uh, yeah, um, I should send a clip of Adam uh, to Tom Hanks. Uh, the bugger isn't returning my calls. Also, he hello uh, to comics from someone even shorter than him. Oh my God. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, these are the problems with streamers, you guys. When you're like streaming for like long periods of time, and then all of a sudden, like you choke on your spit or something, you, you still have to keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you know, you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to leave now. Solo streaming is minutes. hard, especially when something like that happens. Mm -hmm. It's like, eh. I do have water. TZ, I have water. And I was like drinking. I'm like, Please got better, but then it's like the the water was making it worse. <laughs> I was like, oh my and, god! And the problem with water too is it makes you have to pee after a while. It does. Uh, e Clay's telling me like, don't die on us, Nina. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, but it would make never mind. Uh, Wilson, thank you so much for that super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, you should definitely uh, send a clip of, to Adam. Or that that clip of Adam to Tom Hanks, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, hey, comics, did you hear about that? Um, the news of that guy that got saved by a a soccer ball. No, uh, he was like he was floating for how many days in the water? Like eight days or something like that? Or oh, oh, okay, this is so crazy. Like, saved by a soccer ball. I was like, what did it do? Did it hit his assailant in the head or something? Okay. No, like he was in the water and like he this this soccer ball floated near him and he like it, it, it like saved him. Oh wow. That's <laughs> yeah. um that's crazy. It was such a crazy uh, story and I was I was sharing it with Wilson because mm -hmm. I was like uh wilson it's your cousin <laughs> and he named it. i think he named it like uh what was it ferdinand or something it was oh, hilarious man. um yeah wilson um okay wait this was the other thing that i was going to talk about but at the same time i feel like i don't really want to talk about it because i don't feel like getting my uh channel struck so maybe i won't um so i'll talk about this one instead Oh, okay. type in the private chat. I'm kind of curious what you want wanting to talk about. Uh, this one here, I'll just I'll put the link. link. I'll right. li I'll link you, and then uh, but then this one here we can talk about without getting I mean in trouble. It's, it's just I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know if that would get get you in trouble. Maybe it would. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I just try not to risk it as much. It's hard to tell. I mean, you're just talking about travel bans for the most part. <clears throat> yeah, that they were basically not, you know. Yeah. For the I mean, we, we could just read the headline. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll just read the headline and then it, it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, this was the article. It says, court documents reveal Canada's travel ban had no scientific basis. No shit. Yeah. 
and no shit news. I I honestly think you could probably cover that. Um, it, it, as long as it's um, you're not giving medical advice. I think you're <laughs> well, fine. I'm not. I'm not giving medical advice. That that's where that's where YouTube gets cranky, right? Because if you say something and they misconstrue it as uh, you know medical misinformation, right? Yeah, uh, I, I think as long as it's dealing with the court, even though it involves the coof. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is something, this is real. And I, I definitely think if, if the, they were to strike you, you would win because you're covering the news, right? I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, news. Uh, so, so YouTube be nice to Nina. <laughs> we're, we're just talking about what's happening in, in Canada right now. Yep. Uh, and if you're Canadian and you're offended by Canada, I, I'm sorry. 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 Uh, so yeah, it says on August 13th, 2021, the Canadian government announced that anyone who hadn't been vaccinated against COVID uh, would soon be barred from planes tra and trains. In many cases, the uh, the backward, uh, what was it? The backward could not no longer travel between provinces or leave the country. If you lived in Winnipeg and wanted to visit your mother on her deathbed in London or in Hong Kong, perhaps Quebec City, you'd better get jabbed or resign yourself to never seeing your mother again. Jennifer Little, the director of uh, uh, general of COVID recovery, this, uh, the secretive government panel that crafted the mandate called it one of the strongest vaccination mandates for travelers in the world. This is it fucking was, tyranny. It, yes. Yes, it was. And yes, it is. It was draconian and sweeping. And if, and it fit neatly with the public persona that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had cultivated that of the sleek, progressive, forward-looking technocrat guided by fact that uh, fact and reason. Uh, the Canadian Medical Association Journal in June 2022 article observed that Canada had among the most sustained uh, stringent policies regarding restrictions on internal movement. By the way, while this was happening, Justin Trudeau was taking several, because uh, you weren't supposed to like go like travel within provinces. And he would literally travel with, like, he traveled within a province. Like, he went from, like, Montreal to Quebec the day he enacted the tr the travel ban and told people not to do it. And then he, and then he did it himself. <clears throat> and he did it several times. Uh, it was it was a fucking, it, I mean, everything that was handled during that entire period was mishandled. It was actually crazy. TZ Burton for two says Rebel Canada is uh, selling Justin, Trude Justin Castro shirts. Uh, well, that's good. They should bank. Why not? Why not? Fuck that guy. Holy shit. It's like, did my latest tweet get deleted? Or is like, what, there's what? something what I, I, I'm looking for that I wanted to share with you because it's like, is something that you should definitely see. Speaking of like freaking tyranny, right? Or just shit that's not going well. Um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to find it. I thought I I thought I retweeted it out, but I can't freaking find it. <laughs> Darren says true to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, you keep looking and I'll read. But re but recently, uh, recently released court documents which captured the decision making behind the travel mandate indicate that far from following the science, the prime minister and his cabinet were focused on politics. You don't say. It was <laughs> political science, you might say. Oh, political science is a great putting. <laughs> okay, I found it. Actually, I put it in my um my Discord. I'll I'll share it with you. It's okay. It's, once we get done this article, I think that this is something you should pull up. Okay, uh, let's see, Prime Minister, blah, blah, where was I? Okay, uh, Canadians are hardly alone. As, uh, as Common Sense uh, reported, American public health agencies have also been politicized. Two days after announcing the mandate, Trudeau called the snap election, presumably expecting that his Liberal Party, uh, which was in the minority in the House of Commons, would benefit from the announcement and, the, and be capitulated into a majority. That didn't happen, thank God. As it turned out, the liberals failed to win a majority in the September 2021 election. In the meantime, roughly 5 million unvaccinated Canadians were barred from visiting loved ones, working or otherwise traveling. Trudeau, for his part, stayed in power, even though the conservatives have won the popular vote in the last two elections because of Canada's pro uh, pro uh, pro uh, pro uh, I know I can speak parliamentary <laughs> system. They, his they his ass should have been voted out. I'm sorry. God, I mean that. 
See, the thing is, is that like the parties don't like the the leaders don't get voted out. It's the party. So, I know. I know. It, like if that doesn't happen. Script it's just doctor not- tried very hard to, you know. Get the word out. I know a lot of Canadians did because we tried. I yeah. tried very hard, but uh, hey, you know, you guys deal with funny business on your end. We feel we also deal with funny business. Yeah, now. I'm sure there's a fortification going on in Canada as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the court documents are part of a lawsuit filed by two Canadian residents against the government. Until last month, they were under seal. Both plaintiffs are business owners. Both have family in Britain. Both have refused to, uh, the vaccine on the guards of bodily autonomy. Both were reluctant to identify their businesses at, uh, out of fear of losing customers. One plaintiff is Carl, Carl Harrison. In his uh, affidavit, Harrison 58 said that he he and his partner, Emma, had immigrated in tw- 2009 from Britain to Canada. He became a Canadian citizen in 2015. Uh, they had two children, 24, uh, a 24-year-old son and a 14-year-old daughter, and they lived in a, t- a t- uh, I think he means tiny neighborhood, not a Tony neighborhood, in Vancouver. Um, he'd always been an entrepreneur. I was always involved in establishing, owning, and co-owning over four- 40 venues uh, uh, of one sort or another, restaurants, bars, music venues, and comedy clubs, he told me. Uh, one music venue is fairly well known called the Bedford. Ed Shireen got his start there. Since 2000, Harrison has been involved in t- uh, travel industry. We have company in the UK, Ireland, Spain, and we're, uh, we're the largest retailers of packages for Disneyland Paris, he said. He also has an 88-year-old mother in Britain, and he was furious that for months he couldn't visit her. Uh, when you've got a, uh, oppressive government behavior, he told me, you've, uh, you're have you only left with uh, three choices accept it fight it or leave it uh see i chose to leave yeah <clears throat> i can't accept it i moved my family here and i would be letting them down if i moved away so i'm in fight mode the other plaintiff sean Ricard, uh whose father uh, also in britain is suffering from late late stage alzheimer's Ricard, 55 lives in a town of pickering outside uh, toronto and he owns a small exterior uh, siding, the siding, what? Siding and eaves co- contracting business. No, oh, exterior he, siding, like for buildings and oh, eaves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he portrayed himself as a, something of an activist. Uh, I guess I'm the lone ranger, he told me. When I see something wrong, evil, corrupt happen, I feel I have, uh, I have to speak up. Well, thank God somebody does around Canada. Uh, he was surprised when Trudeau announced the travel mandate. I said to myself, holy fuck, how can this be happening here? He at, That's what we all fucking asked ourselves. Uh, he he added that he the only way to stop it would be to, through a revolution, which is never going to happen in Canada or through the courts, and the latter is what we need. Uh, this is very true because, I mean, even though, some, you know, the sparks of it kind of showed with the... Um, with with the freedom convoy oh, yeah. i just i just don't feel like canadians have it in them to like actually like, you know do a revolution <laughs> like they're not yeah, like, uh, they're, it's, they're very pacifist mm. so yeah well i i think the the thing is um they're very comfortable that's that too that's the issue right there is the reason why we're we're dealing with uh, a lot of things right now in this world is because of how comfortable we are um, with our lives. Yeah. And as soon as things get more difficult, mm-hmm. that's when you're going to see suddenly everyone's going to become fucking revolutionaries. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 that kind of plays into the thing I sent you, uh, which, like I said, it's kind of it's a bit of a black pill, but it's something that people need to be aware of. Okay, and let me open that. Hold I on. mean, you can finish the article first. I mean, okay. unless you're unless we're done with it, but. Um, you know, no. the, the, the whole the whole thing is the fact that I know that they're they were pushing the vaccine passport and that recently got shot down because of an elderly man. Um, I unfortunately I didn't look into the article as much as I would would have liked. Uh, but digital ID is becoming a very hot topic. This is something that it, Klaus Schwab is trying to push. It's being pushed everywhere. It's being pushed in Canada. It's being pushed in Europe. They're trying to push oh, this here. Oh, that's because a Trudeau is like, you know. Oh, yeah. He, he's a weft Klaus boy. Klaus Schwab fucking poster yeah. boy. 
Um, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, late at night when uh, uh, Schwab turns into a vampire bat and flies into Trudeau's you know, bedroom, uh, he pins him down and rails him with his oh orders. Oh, my God. You know what? You're probably right. And uh, which, you know, causes me to have to, you know, play this again uh, about Trudeau with Klaus Schwab. <laughs> I have relationships with women. I have relationships with the WEF. But I have sex with Klaus. <laughs> oh, God. Got okay. news for you, Trudeau. That makes you gay. Got news for you, Trudeau. It means, it means you're gay and you're a fucking fascist. <laughs> yeah, I got news for you, Trudeau. You're a fucking fascist. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Um, okay, wait, let's finish this. Through the uh, okay, so in the fall of 2021, Rickard launched a GoFundMe to battle with his uh, government. In November, Harrison, who had learned of Rickard and social uh, on social media, reached out to him. In December, they joined uh, uh, they joint fa jointly filed suit. Rickard said, "So far, the lawsuit has uh, had cost the two plaintiffs about 186." thousand dollars of which Ricard had raised 121 on GoFundMe. That's that's big. Yeah. Uh, in February of uh, of this year, when the Canadian government invoked the Emergency Act in response to the, the truckers protesting a separate vaccine mandate in Ottawa, GoFundMe pro uh, forced Ricard like uh, uh, like those raising money for the truckers off the site. I did not know that. I did not know that that they that they kicked this guy off and he, he probably had nothing to do with the truckers. Yeah, um, a lot of people got kind of caught up in that because of you know just like supporting them. Wow. Yeah, it, it was bad. Um, it, it was really bad. Wow. Okay. Uh, Rickard and Harrison's attorney Sam, whatever is this guy's name is, said that all government's decisions related to uh, public health. Uh, demanded transparency civil servants shouldn't hide behind a short of uh secrecy or shroud of secrecy uh pres well pres velos right yeah pres velos told me uh, have, oh that must be a person's name yeah pres velos that's his sam pres velos i'm bad at names uh the whole point of the case was uh to lift that shroud and cast a spotlight on the unscientific basis of the mandate. Among other things, the court documents indicated that uh, w no one in the COVID recovery unit, including Jennifer Little, Little, the director general, had any formal education in epidemiology, medicine, or public health. Uh, Little, uh, who has an undergraduate degree in literature from the University of Toronto, testified that there were 20 people in the unit when Pres uh, Voss asked her whether anyone in the unit had any professional experience in public health, she said there were there was one person, Monique Saint uh, Laurent. Uh, according to Saint Laurent's LinkedIn profile, she appears to appears to be a civil servant who briefly worked for the Public Health Agency of Canada. Saint Laurent is not a doctor, Little said. Um, reached on the phone, St. Laurent confirmed that she was a member of the COVID recovery. She, re she referred to all of the questions to the government spokesperson. Little suggested that senior officials in the prime minister's cabinet, possibly the prime minister himself, had ordered COVID-19 recovery to impose a travel mandate. Wow. During cross-examination, Little told uh, Pres... I'm just going to call this P. Uh, told P... Uh, repeatedly that discussions about the mandate had taken place at senior and very senior levels, but she refused to say who had given her team the order to impose a travel mandate. I'm not at liberty to disclose anything that is subject to the cabinet confidence, she said. The term cabinet confidence is noteworthy because it refers to the prime minister's cabinet, <laughs> meaning that little could not talk about who had directed the COVID recovery unit to impose the travel mandates because someone at the very highest levels of government was apparently behind it. <coughs> <True. No. coughs> I'm sorry, I had a cough. No, that's okay. I had the same coughing fit. <coughs> um, in the days leading up to the implementation of the travel mandate, transportation officials were frantically looking for rationale for it. They came up short. Uh, that was made clear by an email exchange of the latter half of 2020 in October 2021 between Aaron 
uh, Mick Crory and Don Lumley Mil Milari. Uh, McCrory is the Associate Assistant Deputy Minister of Safety and Security Transport Canada. Is that that fucking guy, like the Indian guy? Because he's an asshole. Uh, the department that houses COVID recovery. Lonely Millari is an official in the Public Health Agency of Canada. In the email exchange, McCrory uh, seemed to be casting about, uh, wait, casting about a credible rationale for the travel mandate. This was less than two weeks before the mandate was set to kick in. Okay, it, so I, I, I'm sorry. Something just kind of dawned on me. Um, unrelated to this. Mm -hmm. But it, it just made me um, think about the whole thing with Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Sri Lanka was a country that was very much controlled by the WEF. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, since Trudeau is um, in bed with uh, Klaus Schwab, literally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, They're doing it. You, you think that, um, well, I, I think they will probably end up like Sri Lanka. I think Canada will probably within the next. You think years. so? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Dude, all because look at what happened with Sri Lanka. Okay. So their their economy got tanked. Mm -hmm. They and this is something that is already happening in Canada. So the, much like the Dutch farmers, this is actually already been happening in Canada, is that they're trying to reduce the quote unquote nitrogen pollution. And they're trying to do it like by 30%. And that stuff, they stopped in Sri Lanka, stopped importing fertilizer. So mm -hmm. a lot of that quote unquote nitrogen pollution is coming from fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And so when you start reducing the amount of um, fertilizer being used, you get less yields with your crops. And obviously, if you're thinning out the herds, you know, from your dairy cows and your meat cows, mm -hmm. that's going to reduce the amount of food that's going to be in circulation. This is stuff that they are already doing in Canada right now. And this is stuff that Sri Lanka has, quote unquote, already gone through. And this is what is going on in Germany, Ireland and Holland. So we're the thing talking. is, the thing is, comics, while I understand what you're saying, you kind of saw a little bit of what Canada is capable of with a trucker convoy, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. That's 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 my point, right? You know, but the, the, that's trucker, thing, the trucker convoy was a result of, um, you know, the draconian laws that they're trying to put in place. As soon as people start getting hungry and they can't, the economy goes to shit, there's no food and no medicine, people are going to take up arms like they did in Sri Lanka. Uh, I, not I really know. take up arms, but I, I think that you will, you will see shit go down. I don't know. I, I like I would love to see that comics. Don't get me wrong. Like I would love for Canada to to do something, but I just I think that I don't know if Canada's like Canadian people. I don't think they're capable. Once of people it. are hungry, they will do it. Maybe. And, and that, well, that's exactly what motivated the people in Sri Lanka. I think they'll be more. I, I think. And maybe I've been too black pilled about Canadians, but it's just I feel like more like they'll just be like, "Tell me what to do, Daddy government," well, it's, and I'll it's do a good, it. It's a good and then possibility. You, would, you can feed me. Like I'll do whatever you want. I'll bend over and take it up. The whatever. Well, well, anyway, my whole my whole point is that the collapse of Sri Lanka is mm -hmm. what I think is going to happen to Canada. I hope so. I mean, I I, I want to see that because that's just, I mean, you know. Get those leaders out. That's all I got to say. Well, yeah. But the, the thing is, like, if the Canadian people are not careful, the exact same thing that happened in Sri Lanka will happen to them. You'll be ruined. Your country will be completely ruined by this. It's already ruined. Like, well, yeah. By the, well, it, it is figuratively, right? I mean, at yeah. least from a leadership perspective. But, yeah. you know, people aren't starving in the streets, right? Not yet. Now, this is true. What Darren is saying here. Is very true. <laughs> Take hockey away and we will ride. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Or go to game seven and lose like Vancouver did, the Canucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll yeah. riot. They'll oh, riot. I, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, they'll riot big time. Uh, but oh, yeah. yeah. You know, take the rights away, though. Mm, that's fine. Uh, T.C. Burton for two says Schwab Trudeau changed the definition of cornhole. Wow. <laughs> wow, T.C. Can't believe you made me read that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so we basically found out like what was, you know, in the court documents. Uh, it, it, dude, it's so ridiculous. Uh, this is what you sent me. Let me play this. I haven't seen this. It, it's a TikTok video of uh, of a farmer. Okay, this is a farmer. Uh, prepare yourself uh, for the coming. This is from a Wall, C a Wall Street Silver. Who is that? I don't know who that is. It's a um, Twitter account. I think it came from the Wall Street Bets kind of thing. Oh, um, okay, yeah, because it's like a blue check they, mark or whatever. Yeah, they I'm post talking. a lot of stuff, and it's pretty it's pretty base, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll follow them. Yeah, Why I not? follow them. Rancher explains the higher feed costs to raise cattle that hasn't hit the market yet. Sorry, okay. rancher, not farmer. People being it's all, it's all good. Concerned about the gas prices, but what you really need to be concerned about is what your food price is about to jump to. Okay. Calves and babies are just now being born. Keep that in mind. So the cost to raise them hasn't hit yet. This bale of hay last year was four bucks. Bag of grain last year was six bucks. This trunk full in here last year would have cost me $14. Today, $20 for a bale of hay, $18 for a bag of grain. I got two bales in here. It's $58 worth of food. Last wow. just my chick, yep. just my goats and my horses, two days. That's it. Wait until the, the prices catch up with your slaughter market when we start rendering animals in the fall. Oof. Prepare for $17 a pound chicken, $25 a pound bacon, $30, $40 a pound beef. It is coming. It's not a joke. Please be cautious. Please prepare. People being concerned. Yeah, about it's, gas it's, prices, it's, it's wild, man. I remember this was happening. Uh, comics when like really close to when I was going to move to Mexico, mm -hmm. it was one of the reasons like the, the, the because mm -hmm. um, like it was expensive to live in Canada. It was extremely expensive. The taxes were really, really high. Uh, the cost of living had gone very high. And one of them was food. And we, we would notice it because we lived like in the outskirts of Vancouver uh, so like, you know, everything was a little bit cheaper. Uh, so gas was cheaper, you know, the cost of living was a little bit cheaper, like outside, uh, Vancouver. Um, and, uh, but we started to notice cause that was like what, like the farm areas were. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, we would get fresh, you know, fresh meat from the meat store and stuff like that. Cause it was farmers taking their, you know, cows and stuff to the butchers, butcher shops. Um, and so you can get, go get really fresh meat. But, but then we started to really realize that, you know, the price of chicken was going up really high. So you would, you would go to the store for like a, you know, a chicken breast that I used to pay like, you know, four or $5 Canadian for, mm -hmm. for one chicken breast starting to become like nine, $10. Well, the you know? thing that like, um, I I've noticed recently because of the food price is going up. Normally you can buy like a pack of chicken for like $11. Usually it was mm -hmm. pretty cheap. Chicken, mm -hmm. uh, white white meat tends to be a little bit more expensive, you know, chicken breast. Mm -hmm. And now um, it's $18 for a pack. Oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And is that like, like the grain fed stuff too? Or is that like no, not that, even? That's just like the regular stuff. <sighs> it's not um, organic or anything like that. It's just like off the shelf, regular chicken. Yeah. I mean, beforehand it would have been like, you know, 11 bucks. Now it's eight. Oh, man. Yeah. Like I started to notice that because like, like I said, it was like really cheap. Like it was relatively cheap to buy meat and food and stuff like that. Like, you know, b before. And then it, like, I, I noticed that the prices were getting <laughs> higher and higher. And now I can't even imagine what the prices are like over there. Like that's how bad it's gotten. And I've heard yeah. that it's, it's gotten really bad. It's uh, um, it's why I have the ranch. I mean, if things really do get that bad, it, it's like, you know, my wife can stay at the house. I will move to the ranch and I will raise our food when I'm not working. Wow. Shane G. White yeah. meat is my stripper name. <laughs> my God, Shane G. Um, <laughs> I, I feel you, dude. And that's what like we're doing in Mexico is, too. Is like this is, you know, we've started our ne nest eggs like we bought land here. We're planning on, you know, getting getting some animals and, you know, doing some doing some farming and growing some. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm already I already do have like a do, man. I have a small garden out there. I'm, I'm gonna be expanding uh, this winter uh, once I get the damn bathroom remodeling done. You know, I want to sink some more money into uh, building out planter boxes uh, mm -hmm. so I can have um, you know a bunch of you know grow my own potatoes because. The potatoes have done really well out there, uh, unattended. Same thing mm -hmm. with the peppers. Um, 
but the you know the main thing is it's like you got to make sure you have the stuff because you know i have uh um, yeah. it's the reason why i i talk about prepping a lot you know i mentioned it in my last video a little bit um one of the big things that i, I find so funny back to the whole thing with um um whatever that movie was called not not good not okay not or, okay yeah yeah something like that. It, it, the fact that you have a trigger warning for that it's like you, you, the people that are complaining about that have no concept of what struggle is or what hard times look like no and i think they're about to get a good dose of it this fall because the the main thing i think most people don't understand is that we live off of last year's harvest mm -hmm. and come fall is when things are going to get begin to get bad yep and i i can't tell you how bad it will be here in the states um i mean jordan peterson had a great interview on with this dude um and they're talking like global famine well man i i mean it's definitely seem it definitely seems like it, it could get there yeah for sure um i mean they've been destroying crops there's, there's a lot going on there's a lot going on uh, this is very interesting, though, because I've had this conversation with my husband a lot because he wants to raise animals. Uh, and Big Chunga says, I could never raise an animal for slaughter. I'd, <laughs> I'd get attached to it and it would end up being an expensive pet. Don't name them. Yeah, we're planning on name not them, naming name ours. Or, 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 or bacon. Yeah, we're, like we're not like I'm not planning on naming any. And I've told him like if you're going to like like first of all, you can't slaughter on the land, like on the property, like you have to take them off property. Like, there's no way that I'm going to be in an area where animals are being killed. Like, like no. Uh, so we're going to definitely like figure that out. But also I'm not naming any of the ones that we're supposed to eat. If, it, if it's getting a name, it's it's a pet. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not I'm not doing that to myself. That one's pork chop and the other one's bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna be so sad. It's gonna like I, I'm gonna be like, literally like Lisa Simpson, like please, Lisa, I bet you love me, love me. I'm gonna like imagine that every time I see a lion. I, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a city boy, you know. I you know haven't gone and killed anything myself to to go eat, oh but god. fuck, I will if I need to survive. Cream G says, I'm not going to name I will name feel my bad about kids. it and I will fucking do it. <laughs> Shane G says, I'm not going to name my future kids. I don't want to get attached. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ah, savage. Shane. That is savage. That's hilarious. Okay. Last topic. Last topic for tonight. Uh, I thought this was crazy, especially for those of you in the chat who have joined me uh, for my review of that sh the show called outer range have you have you heard of that um comics it's called outer range yeah it's I about, have. yeah yeah so it's, it's about a random hole that appears uh it, it's literally like I, I thought it was a plot hole but i saw the trailer for it it looked kind of interesting um it well it had potential let's just oh, say it that. was a bad um it just it, it's just a big mystery box show that just abs oh. goes absolutely nowhere. Like you're yeah. like, okay, it's just like basically a 20 million mystery boxes that don't get any answers. Fuck um, you, and, JJ and they don't Abrams. have a, yeah. And they don't have a season two. So it's like, okay, maybe who knows? Um, Bird up for five says they know global famine is coming and they're responsible. That's why well, they they're trying it. to convince us that eating bugs is cool. That's true. Yeah, but they, it is. Yeah, They've always been doing that, but yes, it's true. This is absolutely well. It, it, right it, on. Look at look at this way. Um, it, this has all been engineered to make, you know, meat completely unaffordable. Right? This is not going to impact the global elites. This basically makes it difficult for people to be able to get, um, you know, the protein from chicken and cows and pigs and whatnot. And so what they do is they are forcing us to, to get the more quote unquote affordable alternative, which is going to be your micro um, livestock, which is worms and crickets and all the other fun mm. shit. They want us to eat bugs. Okay, this is a very hardcore comment. I, I feel like I want to do this in like a Russian accent. I grew up in the Soviet Union and I spent my summers in a farm with my grandparents and I knew the name of my food. Wait, that that's, sounds that's, that's not like Persian, but that's hardcore. Um thanks for sharing that, Bonehead. Um 
Okay, here's Russians okay. Are so, hardcore. The Russian people are very hardcore. They are. Have you seen that? But, have you seen that video of that like that Russian guy uh like working out with that bear and he's like on a tree? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. He's like on a tree and he's like doing like pull-ups and the bear is like pushing the tree thing down. It's hilarious. Um, okay, so this is this is why I brought up the outer range thing because of this article. Uh, the black hole of Chile, 82 foot wide, 600 feet deep sinkhole appears near a small town. Here's the pictures of the goddamn wow. thing. It's massive. That is massive. Isn't that crazy? Fucking hole to hell. <laughs> I know. It just like it appeared. I'd be glad nothing was built on it. Except now, it the like people are wondering because it says terrifying phenomena took place close to the uh, Alcaparosa mine and is thought to be more than 650 deep. Local mayor uh, spoke to the fe- uh, to the fear of hell, but nearby residents of excessive mining in the area. So, like, it could be because of the excessive mining. Oh in no, the area. It, it probably it probably is. Yeah, it probably is. Like, it probably is. But you know what? Strange a lot of a lot of those happened. sinkholes like that are typically like uh, caused by caves collapsing. Yeah, it's usually by like um yeah or uh what's it called fracking right like fracking causes yeah, fracking a lot of, too. yeah yeah, yeah sinkholes uh but yeah I, I just thought it was funny like like oh my god it's a giant sinkhole to nowhere it's like the pit to hell yeah, it kind of feels like it so i thought i'd share that. is it 2022 no it's the pit to hell <laughs> look it's freaking massive well, the thing that's so weird about it is like how round it looks. Like, yeah, that's why it's so trippy. It's a space laser, it's like a perfect circle. Yeah, that's why it's so weird because it looked like the thing from uh, outer range. Here, I'm not see. saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens, but hey, I'm not saying it's not either. No, that is really <laughs> weird. That's absolutely freaking weird. Uh, hold on, let me. Okay, so this is a picture from outer range. Um, just so you can kind of like get an idea of what the hole looked like there. It's literally the same fucking thing. Oh my god! <laughs> look at that. Sucks, man. I mean, it, it looked kind of interesting. It, it's a shame. It's a stupid mystery box show. I wow. mean, you, it definitely had potential. It definitely had potential. I really, I, I liked it. I liked the show, but I was like, ah, oh, no. Like, it's like we need like. It needed to be better. Maybe if they get a season two and they answer some of those mysteries. But we did a spoiler review on it if you want to check it out. Berta for five says, if you lower microphone into that sinkhole, you can hear Slayer songs. <laughs> <laughs> or the chanting of Satan. I don't know. Yeah, or something like that. Or maybe like the Satan from like um, South Park. That'd be funny. Oh, oh Saddam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, he's it's so okay, gay. Yeah. <laughs> God, he was so gay. It's so funny. Um, okay, I think that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh comics, tell everyone where they can find you before I wrap things up here. Hi, everybody. Uh you can find me on Twitter at Comics Division. Of course, you can find me on other YouTubes. Just you know, look up Comics Division, you'll find me. Um And when I live stream, typically on my channel, I have the camera on. But since it's late, I'm tired and I don't feel up to do it. I understand. It's late. Uh, But yeah, most videos, you'll get the animated avatar saying funny things. At least I think they're funny. I love his videos. Everybody, you need to check out Comics Division if you haven't already. Like, what are you doing with your life? Yeah, Uh, check out the latest video. It's pretty funny. I talk about uh, not good. Whatever. Oh, okay. I'll definitely not watch okay. that. Not okay. Not okay. Not okay. Yeah. Right. Um, before we wrap it up, though, actually, one last thing. Uh, Curtis D of Montana still needs our help, you guys. Uh, he upped his goal to four thousand because they 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 need they're not they're not both him and his wife are both not working for the next three four months. So um, they they're just asking to be extended to four thousand so that they can have like four months of basically food and rent and stuff like that covered. So if you are able to give, please donate to Curtis's um, fund for his recovery. 
Um, and uh, I told him to check into hyperbaric chambers because I I was reading about hyperbaric chambers and hyperbaric chambers are quite amazing for bone recovery. So hopefully he can get that kind of treatment. I told him to check with his doctor. Uh, here is Curtis's give, send, go. Uh, I'm going to put that in the chat right now. Um, so if you guys can, please, please donate every $5, every, every dollar helps. And if you can't, I totally understand. We were just talking about how it's hard times. Uh, just please send them either a prayer or share it. Even better, share it out on social media and uh, let's get it out there. No worries, Curtis. Look, he's, there is this picture with his neck brace on now. He's going through a really hard time. Uh, so everybody, please, if you can, give. If you can't, that's totally fine. Just share it if you can. Thank you so much, you guys. And uh, go check out Comics Division's uh, video and channel. And make sure you subscribe to Adam Krigler. A big thanks to him. Did you hear his song before he left? That was no, amazing. no. I, I, I jumped on like a, a little bit, like right before he jumped off. Oh my God. He sang the song that he sang for a troll. And I was like, I need to, I'm going to clip that. <laughs> and yeah, I, like, I, I heard him like, kind of talking about Tim Pool or something. I was like, what the fuck is that about? No, no, no. Yeah, no, it was about some troll that tagged Tim Pool in something. It was oh, stupid. Okay. Um, but yeah, so everybody check out Adam Krigler's channel and Comics Division. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Adam is the goat. He is. He is. Oh, He's my cool God. Dude. Love Adam.